Dr. Joshua Davis. Dear Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We ask that you watch over and protect everyone here today. Let us glorify you in all that we do. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless the United States of America. The first time right, these two teams were scheduled to met, it was going to be the first today. game of the Louisiana Who's college regular season. College but according to the snowpocalypse, as it Are was called, we ended up having football? this game on the senior day, the last home game of the regular season for Louisiana college. Question. As Southwestern travels to Pineville, Louisiana for this broadcast on SHN Sports. I'm Carl Schoen along with Chuck Close Tracy. Mickey Holden fans. is the... <laughs> camera operator and by the end of the well, game Chuck we're going to find out the PA well, announcer's yeah, yeah. name so we can get him Are on the broadcast ready? too if you can't hear us and you can hear him that's going to be an expected theme here as we're amongst the fans he's got a great voice and it is very loud so Are you'll you probably ready? hear him throughout the game last time these two teams met it was in Georgetown Texas the Southwestern University Pirates took that game 50 to 7 over Louisiana College Wildcats so Louisiana College is looking to exact a little revenge today and the Pirates looking for their first win of the season yeah the Pirates obviously coming off of that loss at University of Mary Harden Baylor this is the second game of their two game road swing here as in a moment you'll see the Wildcats coming into your frame as Fireworks firing at the end of the end zone. Chuck, a bit of a historic game as we have the final NCAA broadcast, or excuse me, final NCAA football game being hosted by Louisiana College as they move to the NAIA next year. That's right, and the only way they get another home game is if something happens in the postseason the way that it's set up. They may get a home game out of that, but you're right. The last regular season game in this division, and they'll be moving up a division. Yeah, is... Uh, you know, there's always an interesting yeah, argument, uh, NAIA, uh, what kind of trans University translation it goes to because it depends on your conference, much like how it does here sure. with the Once again, American Southwest, which loaded here. Stars. Well, you so, know, Coach Austin always calls the American Bill Southwest Louisiana Conference College, the Louisiana SEC Purdue, of Division Three, and, and he's got a lot of Let's truth in that statement. Yeah, as it's always interesting to see how it works as I believe Louisiana College will be making a decision that's best for their entire athletic program, but they might uh, – miss out on some really good football here in the American Southwest. We're happy that you guys joined us here. We're moments away from the coin toss as the captains will meet yeah, at midfield. midfield. And Chuck, the uh, what are the toss. keys here after a bye week to bounce back from that University of Mary Harden Baylor loss for the Pirates? Well, they need to get off to a quick start and, and not lose confidence in a, from the results of that Romero. game because there were many positives King that Captain came out of that game. game. The uh, biggest issue between PBR Southwestern Parker, and Mary Harden Baylor were self-inflicted wounds for the Pirates. And so they need to make sure that they get out to a quick start today and minimize those pre-snap penalties and, and make positive gains offensively. The defense played pretty well against West, Mary Harden Baylor. That is a significant the offense that you've got to face year in, year out in this conference. And for a half, they played well. And, you know, Mary Harden Baylor yeah, is what they are. They're... They're a significant force so in this conference. 
Southwestern won the coin toss. They're going to defer to the second half. half. So that means Louisiana College will receive the the football to start the ball game. Which means we get to move into Sal Palmero the third, their main quarterback. And he is definitely somebody that can do it with his arm as he had an accurate 61% completion percentage in his first win, uh, the win against East Texas Baptist. And then last week he was forced to throw 39 times and he came up with two quick touchdowns in a fourth quarter that Louisiana College won 21 There's to 13. Right, well, they don't have the phrase yeah, Southern up. Air all over their memorabilia around here for no reason. They like to air it out here at Louisiana College. Well, that should be a fun thing to explore here. As Coach Austin said, it was going to be a wild card playing them their first game of the season. Now that they have two games to kind of know what they're about, it's definitely going to be a little bit easier of a task for the Pirates to know what to expect out sure. of this offense. Scouting a little easier when you have a couple of games of film to look at. The Pirates huddling on the sideline here prior to the kick, and the kicking unit will come out. Will Herps will kick this one away for Southwestern. Kane and Leon, one of the deep backs, along with number 22, Dalen Dil- Leon. Charles. For the wild Leon waiting around the five. Charles just a few steps ahead of him. Will Herps. Along Feeling the out the wind here. Charles. It is a windy day, so hopefully we don't lose our rosters at any point. I taped mine down, but that's not a guarantee it's not the a wind guarantee is strong. At all. It is a big wind today that's pushing Old Glory there in the corner of the end zone. A solid way even with the Wildcat scoreboard. Will Herps will line it up from nine yards out. He'll kiss send it away from the 35 total leather, and this game's underway. It's a booming kick that Leon will have to take at the goal line, and he elects to take it across the five. Down the right hash marks to the numbers at the 20. The ball comes loose. It's bouncing around to the 35, and it's downed on top by a Wildcat. As Number six, Kate hey, Lewis, <laughs> you hear a sigh of relief from the PA the announcer. Yeah. He's going to be a homer that we get to have some fun with all game. That, that's all right. You know, that's, that's the Wildcats. thing about it. Number 25 getting on the recovery there, Cole. Fournay, Fournay, gain on the bumble recovered for the, the Wildcats, pickoff. and so we'll get first the first offensive Wildcats play from, of this ball game. Will come line. from the Wildcats. Claws up, Cats fans! Saul Palmero will be the quarterback here. The senior trying to lead his team to a victory in their final NCAA home regular season game at Wildcats Stadium. First and 10 from the 30, a zone read and a handoff bouncing outside around the 30, looking to make a stutter step to the 35 and then pushed out of bounds around the 37. First handoff of the game to uh, Mark Kalen Milburn. Him and Devin Briscoe form a dangerous duo in the backfield. So they play with a little bit of southern ground instead of southern air to open the drive, but that's not to be, uh, uh, or that's not a surprise. We'll see what they do here on second. Or the second first down, rather. First and ten for Louisiana College. It's a play action. Palmero will air it out down the left side. He underthrows it a bit, and then it's incomplete, as that was intended for the man out of the backfield. Again, for Louisiana College, I believe that was... Well, that's Jules Williams on the coverage Jules Williams on the coverage, and I think it was Milburn. No, I beg your pardon. That's 18, not 10. And it was Glenn White. So Glenn White almost comes up with an underthrown pass, and then Jules Williams with a good defensive effort to make sure it falls incomplete. Clock stops at 14-24 left to play in the first quarter. Second down. Second and 10. Two men in the backfield of Palmero, and he will hand it off this time to Briscoe, who cuts back to the middle of the field, gets across the 40, and picks up about four yards on second down, making this about a third and six. It's a point here where the... Southwestern defense needs to stiffen its neck and stop this drive. It could be two down territory in the location of where the ball is, but you want to try to minimize the damage on this play and force a decision by the Wildcats. He'll pick up four. Damon Charles is the running back in the backfield now on third and six. Ball at the 43-yard line. Palmero in the shotgun. I think he wants to change the play here. Play clock down to 10 seconds. 
Looks like he's not going to even bluff the run. It's going to be a pass on third and six. He steps up in the pocket, scans to his left, throws down the left sideline. Williams is there again. And what then on the pass. catch, it was White who comes down to completion as he just got one foot in before he stepped out of bounds at the 18-yard line of Pirates territory. That was a uh, that was a, uh, a beautiful pass and great coverage by Jules Williams. It just There was nothing that could be done. That's the end of the red I thought it was incomplete yeah, for just a second, but White was able to come down with it and a new set of downs, first and ten from the Pirates' 18-yard line for Palmero in the Wildcat offense. It's a straight give here to Milburn, and he tries to bounce around outside, and the Pirates are able to cut him off. Only a gain of about a yard to the 17. Major George filling the hole there and swallowing up the running back Our and Kaylin preventing and any Milburn. gain on the play. Second down. Up the middle for the Wildcats. No gain on the play. He'll bring up second and ten. They say officially no gain there on the sideline. Looks like it's a 17 to me as that's where the line judge is. Second down, Palmero. Two men in the backfield. Looks like he has a blocking fullback, two receivers to the right, a single receiver to the left, and it'll be another handoff to Milburn on the zone read, and Ben Brockman there to lay him out. Nice job by the Southwestern front as well. Number 77, Slim Fan Jr. also getting in on the action on that tackle. That, of course, Nick Hackett. It's going to be third down now. That was a tackle for a loss for at least a couple yards. It's third and 11. Trips left, single receiver to the right. Palmero is going to have to air this one out from his own 19-yard line. He wants to change the play with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Well, if you're the Wildcats, you want to protect the ball here, too, and give yourself an opportunity for points if you don't convert on a first down. Play clock down to seven, and I think they're going to call their first time out of the game here as this is a very important third down, as you were just mentioning. And the Wild Southwestern actually takes the timeout. No timeout on the field. And I think that that's probably a good call because it's just as important a defensive play. You want to force a tough field goal in this situation. And obviously they saw something that appeared to be, was going to be taken advantage of by the Wildcats. So they had to call a timeout to shore that up. I didn't see what it was, but they were nervous about something called a quick timeout. And as you said, and as I said earlier, we really want to force a fourth down and long here and force a kick into the wind. It's not significant, but it's enough of a win that it can affect the kick. I need to beg your pardon. William Whitehurst the fifth was actually the person who had that tackle for loss for the Pirates, or was at least in on that tackle. He's okay. playing middle linebacker right now. We'll see what they dial up here on third and 11. Clock stopped at 12.02 out of the timeout. Palmero has Milburn to his left. Three receivers on the left side, a single receiver on the right. They're looking at Leon on that right side. No progress over to the left side. Palmero has a man open for a first down to five. Ball comes loose, and Glenn White dives on top of it, actually. Beg your pardon, that is not Glenn 18. White. That, that was uh, Raul Aranda. Alert play by... And Zion Williams was the first one who had the completion, and they dropped it. Yeah. Keep the drive alive. It is going to be first and goal now. Ball on the five-yard line. Fumbled or tossed to number 18. Either way, it's a first down. Pirate first defense to needs to stiffen up for sure here. Backs to the goal line. So they do credit it to Glenn White, 18 instead of 19. Beg your pardon. And it'll be first and goal from the five. Palmero with two men in the backfield. Milburn to his left. Single receiver split on either side. Milburn gets the give, and he is hitting the backfield. Stumbles with it and gets to the five before he is brought down. No gain on the play. And almost lighting that one up for Southwestern. A good Bernard's defensive effort Century. by Bernard Century. Came up and, and got a, a, an ankle and slowed Milburn up and no allowed game. the rest of the defense to swarm right. and prevent Caleb any Milburn. gain. Second and goal. Brings up second and goal for the Wildcats. Wildcats want to take their time here fans. as the play clock just gets rolling under 25. 20 seconds left to, for them to get a snap off. A big sigh of relief after converting on a third and 11. Two men in the backfield here. Milburn to the right of Palmero. Single receiver split wide on both sides. From the left hash mark, a play action and a pass across the middle, broken up at a flag. Good defensive effort from Jules Williams, but it looks like the official saw some contact that affected the pass. It had to be his backside yes, arm on the, on the back on of play. the receiver where it looked like he might have twisted him a little as he reached around. That's the only explainable call there. It was good coverage otherwise. Pass interference, defense number 21. They do call the, the pass interference. Therefore, the ball plays the two-yard line. Automatic first down. So it'll be first and goal from the two for the Wildcats. 
Let's see if the Pirates can force a field goal with this short field here. Backs against the goal line. Tough break for the Pirates that now they have to deal with a full set of downs from the two. Palmero sends a man in motion. That's Leon. And an option play to the right that goes out to Milburn. He tries to stretch it wide. Stutter steps into the end zone. That's Touchdown, Wildcats. And they strike first. Good blocking on the right side for the Wildcats. That's, That's going to give them a six-point lead. Milburn. You know, I think your I initial reaction Dylan is to Milburn. close up all the gaps there on the, you know, follow the offensive line and the A gaps, the B gaps, but Milburn decided to take it outside, and that's where he really found some space to try to make a couple Pirates miss and the gap that got him into the end zone. He only needed to go about two yards once he turned the corner, and now the point after attempt. Well, Major George was the only one who had an opportunity at that tackle. Milburn got outside of him. Point after and is up and good. good. And that makes Louisiana College up 7-0. 10 in the first I expect quarter, this to be a high score zero. ball game, so yeah, I'm not surprised that the Louisiana seven. College Wildcats coming off of the last meeting with the Pirates, taking a thumping, would drive down the field and score a touchdown. The Pirates had their opportunities to stop that drive, and the Wildcats made big plays on those third and longs to convert and continue the drive. So instead of the traditional Wade Simmons, I knew that that wasn't right. It was number 45 instead of 47. Hunter Martinson, sophomore, getting the point after attempt through for the Wildcats. And it will be Martinson here to kick it away to the Pirates. Eli Norris back deep with Austin Castilleja at the five-yard five line. 10.35 left to play in the first. We'll see if the Pirates get a return opportunity here. We have had a lot of teams kick away from the Pirate returners. Martinson will take a 10-yard charge. He readies his team and puts total leather from the 35. And over in that will angle towards the sideline on the right. Castilleja will let it go into the end zone for a touchback. And it went just inside the pylon, so it's a legal, no penalty, kick great kick. The end zone. It'll be a touchback. So it'll be Southwestern ball first, first down. Southwestern. Yeah, no point to actually return that. No. That would have been a dangerous return. No advantage to the, the Pirates in that situation. Southwestern Pirates wearing their, I'd say, pretty classy yellow uniform I love black them. trim. I love them. Yellow on yellow. Looks good. Let's see, let's see if they can look as good converting in them, executing. It'll be Landry Gilpin leading the offense. He has two men in the backfield with him. Castiejas lined up at a running back. Two receivers on the right side, a single receiver on the left, and Ethan Powell. And it's a play action, and then dumping it off to Austin Castilleja for a gain to the 30 was Landry Gilpin, and a nice pickup of five on the first offensive play for Southwestern. Good job of taking what the defense was Deontay giving there. Yeah. Gilpin had a little bit of pressure, but he was able to get outside of it and just flip it out to Castilleja for a nice gain on first down. Staying ahead of the chain so far. That's the key That's the key to offense most of the time here on second and five. Two receivers to the left, single receiver to the right. Casiejo empty out of the backfield, and it's a handoff running up the middle and sliding for, I believe, the first down. The chain it gang kind of lost first their down. job right there as I was looking for it, and picking up the first down for the Pirates is Dawson Gonzalez. And Dawson Gonzalez ducked to avoid getting his head taken off by one of the linebackers. It was an alert play to... Still pick up the first down and avoid any unnecessary Down contact. To the 36. Pirates get to the, Pirates. the 36-yard line. They're in their own territory, trying to answer Lundesby back to a seven, or excuse me, a touchdown on the first drive for the Wildcats. Here it's a handoff to Castilleja. He follows the block by Dawson Hurdles, a defender, gets to the 40 on the wide side of the field, and. They'll mark him down at the 41. Keep the clock running at 9:16 left to play in the first. It's about six-yard gain. Nice effort, athletic play by Castilleja to jump over the stack and pick up a couple extra yards. First time we've really seen Castilleja line up in the backfield, and he's doing a pretty good job being used in different ways, typically a receiver. It's the first time that Louisiana College has seen Castilleja in the backfield as well. Castilleja lined up to the right. Gonzalez lined up to the left of Gilpin here in the shotgun. Castilleja goes in motion, and it's a dive here for the fullback, Dawson Gonzalez, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. 
it's a good counter call. It just yeah, wasn't nine, executed well field, enough and great defense set. by the left side of the, the Louisiana the the defensive line to, to prevent any fourth. openings there for, for the Pirates. Dawson Gonzalez. Bring up Wildcat fans, close up. It's going to be third and about five. We'll call it third and five here. Two receivers to the left, a single receiver to the right. That's Ethan Powell lined up, isolated on the narrow side of the field. Two men in the backfield, Castilleja and Gonzalez with Gilpin. He pump fakes to the left side, tries to escape the pressure to the right, but he is tackled by big old number 99 for the Wildcats. That's a good defensive play by William Robert. Big number 99. Yeah, he, he did not move anywhere the from the middle and was waiting on Bring Gilpin, forcing down. a punt situation for the Pirates. Will Herps will kick this one back to Leon. Herps with a wind to his back. Should get a good boot here. He'll send it away from about the 25. Cannon Leon will have to play this one off the bounce inside the 15. Takes it to the right sideline and hurdles his way out of bounds around the 30. Number six, Cannon Leon. And let's see where they officially the mark him out because return. that'll probably Just be, it is about the 30-yard line. Yard line where the Wildcats will start their second drive of the ball game. They took an early 7-0 lead on their first drive. And here it is with 7.27 left to play. In the first, the Wildcats have an opportunity to extend their lead. The it's an important drive here for the line. Pirate defense. They don't want to dig too big of a hole early. There's still plenty of football to play, but they need to, to follow through on, on stopping the Wildcat offense, and especially in third and long situations, which they failed to do in the opening drive. Officials giving a little hold up right now. New football, I suppose. Well, Louisiana College wants to use their football, and it may be the kicking ball, which is also different than the game ball that you would typically play offense with. They're usually more worn and, and soft. Palmero in the shotgun on first and 10 from the 30. We'll hand it off to Milburn, and Milburn is tripped up in the backfield, and a and solid defensive play King by... Milburn. Jackson, Jackson Reese, Reese, who comes out, and he had an injury in the UMHB game, and it's good to see him back on one the field. He gets the tackle and limits the pickup to one. Did a great job of uh, setting the edge there at the cornerback position and forcing the turn back inside, and he still made the tackle as well. Palmero in the shotgun. will hand it off to Milburn. He takes it out around the left end, and he gets hit up at around the knees, and uh, Bernard Century. Bernard Century also teaming Mark up Cameron on the Miller. tackle. Once again for the Wildcats on the run. For the Pirates. The freshman, I beg your pardon. I had that roster. I might have lost my roster to the win here, Chuck. Well, you can take mine. No, wait, here it is. I found it among my papers here is William Whitehurst, the fifth. He's having a really solid game so far. Third and six. Want to make sure I get that right. I like that name. Yes. 6.25 left to play. In the first as the clock moves here on third and six, the P Southwestern fans getting behind the Pirates defense here. Palmero looking to escape the pocket to the right side. On the run, scanning down the field. He almost completes it, a bullet pass intended for Zion Williams. Falls incomplete, and that brings up fourth down. Great coverage there by Elijah Norris to make that a difficult throw and completion, which it did not occur. Great defense. 6-10 is where the clock stops in the first after that incompletion. And this is what you wanted to do in the opening drive. But like I said, generally opening drives are scripted. They're based on uh, scouting and sometimes difficult to slow an offense down on that opening drive. Did a good job this second drive, the Pirate defense, forcing a punt. Castilleja back deep to receive this punt. And it's a wobbler that bounces at the 40, and it'll be surrounded by Wildcats inside the Pirates' 34-yard line. That's a great job by the Southwestern defense to get and out the there and get a punt. three and out and give the ball back to the offense. The offense had two positive Dale plays Martin. in a row and then two For draws. The, uh, no, line, you know, no real yardage gain, no real yardage loss, and they were forced to punt. We'll see what Gilpin and the offense has in store for the Wildcat defense here. Second offensive drive of the game for the Pirates. Landry Gilpin in the shotgun. First and 10 from the 
Pirates 37 yard line so they got a generous spot after it was downed and a handoff to Dawson Gonzalez he goes behind his left guard and he loses the football Pop falling on top of it are the Wildcats and they'll take over at the 43 yard line in Pirates territory I'm not so sure he wasn't down it looked like the referee was pointing down and so it is second down so they, it was not a fumble was down when he fumbled the ball Wow. So the Pirates ground caused break. it basically when Gonzalez's arm, the ball that was the arm that was holding the ball hit the ground. That's what jarred it loose. I so like that the officials have learned to let that play go and then decide later, though. He came in from the sideline pointing down almost immediately. So he, he was aware that that was not a fumble. Pirates catch a break and pick up two yards, second and eight from the 43 yard line. A keeper for Gilpin as he faked the handoff to Castilleja, bounces around the 45 and gets to midfield. I think the Pirates are in Wildcat territory for Number the first time this afternoon. Midfield. And that's another first, first down, down for the Pirates, and they continue this drive. They need to end it in points here early. 5.01 left to play in the first, and the clock's still ticking here as the Pirates get into Wildcat territory at their 49-yard at their line. Gilpin showed good vision on that run. He faked inside and then bounced it outside, picked up quite a few yards. First and 10 for Gilpin and the Pirates. He'll drop back for a pass, scans to his right, throws to his right. It's completed and then being pushed out of bounds for the Pirates. A Mason solid Biggers. game by Mason Biggers, who was our guest on SU Football Weekly. And he picks up about seven yards on first down. AJ Whitaker. It'll be second and three. Pushing him out of bounds. And, uh, the that's first the way you stay ahead of the chains right there. Give yourself a second couple of opportunities to get a first down here. 4.15 left to play in the first. Two receivers on both sides. Castiel's in the slot left. Anthony Stevens wide left. Biggers wide right. Dropping back is Gilpin. Under pressure, he thought about rolling to the left, and now he bounces out to the right side, and then he throws it to a receiver down the right sideline. That's yeah, just a good play to not rush. lose any yards on the sack. Well, Why Gilpin Wildcats. saw Fire Stevens pass. get a little bit of separation on the Coming left sideline and wanted to roll that way so that he could throw a pass to Anthony Stevens, but the Wildcat defense cut off his path, forced him back to the right, and he had no choice but to throw it away. Yeah, and it was a nice little sidearm that almost got to Mason Biggers, but that would have been a really tough pass to catch. And now here we are at third and two. Ball on the 42-yard line of the Wildcats. Pirates trying to get on the scoreboard. Two receivers on both sides from the right hash mark. Gilpin in the shotgun, Dawson to his left. Fakes the draw and then lobs it to his would-be running back and. Gianni Tsegui was in there to try and maybe catch that in front of the offensive line after the trenches. There's a miscommunication on where that pass was supposed to be delivered. And it brings up fourth down. But this is two down territory. I like to see the Pirates go for it here. They only need three yards to convert. Clock stopped at 3.53 on the incompletion. Two receivers to the left and a tight end on that left side. Two men in the backfield with Gilpin. Castilleja comes out of the backfield to make the catch, and he stiff arms the defender and fights for the first down. He tries to extend the football. I don't He's know if he got there. Get it. He's and, about a yep. yard and a half short. It looks like the, yep, will be yeah. at the 41-yard line, and that's where it's the Wildcats Wildcat will take it over as the Pirates. I like the play call, just really good defense to sniff that out from the Wildcats. Castilla almost broke that initial tackle but it was a great job by the defender to sink his claws into Castilla and prevent him from gaining the additional yard and a half he needed to convert. 346 left in the first is when Palmero and the Wildcats take over here on their final home game in the NCAA. Palmero. Fakes the hand off to Milburn and then throws down the right sideline and Jules Williams was able to get his hand on that when it falls incomplete. Jackson Reese was the Jackson Reese, defender I beg your pardon. getting his hand up and that was a good effort, although he may have prevented another incomplete. Uh, pirate from intercepting that pass as, as number 28 was coming over and may have had an opportunity, Brandon Jennings. Not Brandon Jennings, but Patrick Nicholas rather.
Second and 10 from their own 42-yard line. Palmero in the shotgun, fakes the handoff to Milburn and rolls out to the right, will throw across the middle and is completed to Leon across the 50 into Pirates territory. Right at the first down marker. Actually, they'll call him short, third and one. Good conversion there. Uh, well, not conversion, but good play yeah, no, for Leon. the Wildcats the to make it third and Just short. short so first down. very manageable to try to keep the third drive alive for the Wildcats. Wildcats. 318 left to play in the first, and a big defensive stand here, and this might also be two-down territory for the Wildcats if they can't convert right here. Fullback goes in motion twice. Milburn gets the handoff, tries to go around the left side, they, and I think he stopped short. The Pirates plug the hole. It's fourth down, but this is also two-down territory if you're the Fourteen Wildcats, Milburn. so they'll have to All be two run. plays of great defense there to stop this drive. About a yard short, looks like. There was a gang of Pirates in on that celebration, or that tackle, but the biggest celebration coming from Edmundo Suarez. I think he got hyped from a big hit that he laid to stop that at the trenches. We'll see if it's enough momentum to stop it twice. Two offensive linemen lined up as fullbacks here. In the shotgun is Palmero. He has Milburn to his left, and it'll be an option to go away from that. Milburn kicks it, and he breaks one tackle, gets around left side, picks up the first down, spins around a defender at the 40, and gets and to the, the Pirates' 36-yard line Mark for a big explosive play. Corner. And that's, that's a crazy good down. play call if I've ever seen one the as they distracted everybody from up the middle. Almost Major George coming up with the stop in the backfield. That would have been an incredibly athletic play. Just to be in position to make an attempt on that tackle was a great effort by Major George, but good effort by Melbourne to use that speed to get outside and pick up the first down for the Wildcats. Two minutes to play in the first. New set of downs in Pirates territory. Palmero will fake the handoff to Milburn. He's under pressure, rolls out to the right. It's completed and a stutter step and then push out of bounds as Micah Dunn yes, seven, does a Micah good job Dunn creating a space and becoming available for Palmero there. Gage Bernard on the stop for the Pirates there. Pick up for the Wildcats, brings up second and six. Slim fine, getting the Southwestern fans fired up. Second and six, ball on the 33-yard line. Wildcats in Pirates territory. They lead seven to nothing, a minute 38 left to play in the first. An option out to Milburn, and he spins away from one Pirate, but then he is wrapped up and brought down, and the Pirate making the tackle for Southwestern was Jay Hanna. Great effort by the entire left side of the Pirate defense to minimize any damage on that game. They got about a yard, maybe a half. So it's third and three now, or about third and five, I beg your pardon. Big play here for the Pirate defense. Two receivers on both sides here. A bit of a spread look for Palmero as he drops back. Throws across the middle, and it's incomplete. Pass intended for Pass Micah intended Dunn. For Kanan Leon goes incomplete. That was a great effort there by Patrick Nicholas to get his hand in there and break it up. There was a lot of traffic there over the middle, but the pass was forced in there, and... Patrick Nicholas did a good job of poking it out, making sure nobody came down with it. Fourth down. No man's land territory here as it's a bit too deep for a field goal and obviously way too far into Pirates territory for a punt. So they're going to go for it on fourth and five from the 32-yard line in Pirates territory. Palmero in the shotgun. Will drop back, scans across the field, back to the middle, throws across the middle. It's completed to Micah Dunn. He picks up the first down for the Wildcats. That was a great catch and by Dunn. Pass, you, there's not much you can do about that. The pass was on target, and Dunn just snagged it in. Good route. Down to the 19-yard line, into the red zone for the Wildcats. Clock still moving despite the chains moving with 40 seconds left to play in the first. The Wildcats will slow it down 27 seconds on the play clock. This drive similar to the first drive. The Pirates forcing many third downs, but the Wildcats converting on those third downs to keep the drive alive. Milburn in the backfield. First and 10. Milburn gets the give, finds a gap around his right, or excuse me, his left end, and he turns up the middle to get brought down after a gain of three. Bernard on the stop there for the Pirates. And the officials stop play here as the clock will stop at 14 seconds left to play in the quarter. 
I didn't see why, but yeah, they'll wind the clock now, and there's the 10 seconds Cats left the in the play. quarter, so the play clock is turned off, and the Wildcats don't seem really interested in getting a playoff. They'll switch sides. They'll get the wind at their back, and then if they're forced to field goal, it's a better opportunity for their kicker. That's the end of the first quarter. So at the end of one, Wildcats, Wildcats lead at 7 0 over the Pirates. Your score, and Southwestern I think it's been a very fun competitive football game so far, Chuck. It has. The Pirates just need to put a few more plays together offensively, convert that into points. Defensively, the Pirates have played very well, except for on third and long. And you got to give a little credit to the Louisiana College Wildcats because they've come up with good play calls on third down, and they've converted at least three deep passes, and they were accurate throws by Palmero and good catches by the receivers. You see why they, they have the, the phrase Southern Air as, as part of their tag here at Louisiana College because they like airing the ball out. So it'll be first and 10 at the 12 yard line for the Wildcats as they try to add on to their 7 0 lead here to start the second quarter. And you mentioned that wind. We don't talk about it too much. You might be able to hear it as we're sitting outside in the stands. That wind is kind of shifted to coming into our faces. We're not too far off from the camera angle as it kind of was going into the end zone. Now it's it moving. It did shift yeah. from behind Louisiana College to coming across their face. Interesting. We'll see if that works in the Pirates' favor here. Second and seven. If anything, it's a neutral wind. Right. Second and eight for the it makes a kick tough to across like that, Here especially for a right-footed kicker. Mark Halen Milburn in the backfield with Palmero. Leon goes in motion as he stutter steps back to the left side. A handoff to Milburn. He finds the corner on the right side, and he goes into the end zone for a touchdown. Mark Good Kane. vision there by Milburn. He saw a hole open up. He was patient. He waited for it to fully open. And when it did, he sprinted to the end zone, basically untouched. 14.55 left to play in the second quarter. The first play of the second quarter is a 12-yard touchdown for the Wildcats and Markalen Milburn. And he just followed his blockers, and that's how you do it. You have vision first, but then you follow the fundamental rules. You don't maybe try and make a better play where you have a wide open hole on the right side. That's where he had to have patience to wait for it to open up. Had he, had he slammed it in there initially, it, he wouldn't have gone into the end zone. And we have a and we have a fake here as Hunter Madison was lined up for the kick and then trying to the move it was the holder, Lucas step. Comier, and he oh, uh, did not boy. find the end zone there, Chuck. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that wasn't a fake. It was a, a, a messed up snap where it, it bounced 14. a little bit to the – the holder and he called uh, 55. He knew that it would get blocked. They if he usually didn't. say fire when Southwest that happens if you're on Double offense, so that everyone knows you 13. convert to a, a two point conversion. It was ineffective. The pirate defense there able to swallow that up and prevent the point after or points after in that case. Good discipline by the Pirates to keep the score at 13 to nothing. 14.55 left to play in the second quarter, and Southwestern will get the ball back following. That touchdown scored by Mark Halen Milburn. This should be a returnable kick with the wind blowing across. We'll see what kind of kick is is made by the kicker for it's, it's Hunter uh, Martinson, the kicker for the Wildcats. Back deep will be Costier. I'd like to see him get an opportunity for a decent return here. Elijah Norris back there as well. So Hunter Martinson will line it up from the 35. Castilleja waiting around the three-yard line. He had a really good kickoff earlier on his last kickoff after the first score by the Wildcats. And now he sends it away from the 35, angling it towards Castilleja. And he'll just let this one bounce in the end zone, another touchback. Nice boot by the kicker. It'll be Southwestern football, first and 10, and they'll – Need to answer here. They don't want to dig too deep of a hole and give the Louisiana College Wildcats another opportunity to add points. So at the minimum, they're going to need to flip the field here, drive it to at least Louis midfield, punt it down. Southwestern University. At worst. At Ball best, you want to go on ahead and take line. it in for a score. First and 10 from the Pirates from their own 25-yard line following the touchback by Martin. He opened in the shotgun. To Segui lined up to his left, trips to the right. Single receiver isolated on the left side is 
the combo tight end, Ethan Powell. Gilpin drops back for a pass, rolls out to the left. He's going to decide to tuck in and run across the 25-30. Shifts angles back to the left, hash marks at the 35, finds room at the 40, and is down at the 45-yard line. And Landry Gilpin, always dangerous with his legs, decides yeah, to do it himself run. that time. Right up the that was a wise run and a wise decision to get down when he did. He picked up the first down plus, and he avoided any kind of unnecessary contact, which as a quarterback, you want to minimize as much contact as possible. And it's That's how injuries occur. And his fundamentals, he's ready to throw until he crosses that line of scrimmage, then he tucks it and runs right away here. A new set of downs from their own 45. The Pirates have possession. Gilpin on the play action, decides to tuck it and run again as he escapes to the left side across midfield of the 45 and pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And they continue to pick up Pirates. first downs on the legs of Landry Gilpin. There maybe to angle him out for a little bit more of a limited loss Isaac. was DeAndre James. They're attacking the edges with Gilpin and, and forcing for the, the Louisiana College Wildcat defense to chase him and take angles, and Gilpin's taking advantage of it and converted two first downs on two plays. Pirates in Wildcat territory now at their 40, first and 10. Gilpin with two men in the backfield with him. Uh, give to Castillo, who will pass it back to Gilpin, and now Gilpin has some receiving yards. He has room after the catch, and he gets across the 30 to the 20, tries to get past one more defender at around the 10, and Landry Gilpin has done it all on this drive for the Pirates and gives some passing yardage to Austin Castilleja. And, and a, a little credit to Ethan Powell as he picked up a block to give Gilpin another 10-yard gain at the end of that run. Now that pass play gets the Pirates. 13-34 left to play in the second quarter. Pirates are going to get on the scoreboard, and now they're going to show a huddle after a couple, of a Wildcats few explosive fans. plays to get them into the red zone for the first time this afternoon. They got a new quarterback, Coleman in. Kerr, now in the shotgun. He has Dawson to his left, Cassier to his right. Two receivers on the right and a tight end on that side as well. Kerr, design quarterback run, will try to go around his right end. He escapes one tackle and jumps forward across the 10-yard line. They'll stop him at the nine. Kerr, more of a bruiser Number type one, running Michael back. Lenton Gilpin, on one to well, outrun you, a put a move on you. Where Kerr, Kerr will just lower his shoulder. <laughs> He's second down for the Pirates. Pirates picked up two yards on that play. They have it inside the 10 on second down. Gilpin back in for the Pirates. Gilpin in the shotgun. Castilleja lines up in the slot right. Ethan Powell wide right. Rolling out to the right is Gilpin. He looks back to the left side, lobs it up deep, and it's caught, completed by the Pirate. Coming in with the big-time catch is Joey Touchdown, Robinson. Southwestern. That was a great design play. All the motion of the offense was moving to the right side of the field, forcing the defense that direction. Gilpin turned the other way for a wide-open receiver. That was, of course, Joey Robinson snagging that in for the score. The touchdown for the Pirates happens at 12.23 in the second quarter. That's how they get on the board. Will Herps will line up for the point after. This is an important point after. They're all important, but... It's very quiet here on the Louisiana College side as Herps sends this one through the uprights in good. And That's your point. He's good. the new score is 13-7. 12-23 left to play in the second quarter. I'm Carl Schoening along with Chuck 12, Crazy. Mickey holding on the camera, quarter. happy that she was able to come down here to Louisiana. Yep. As 12, 23. It's a good six and a half quarter. hours away, probably eight hours if you make your seven, stops, Chuck. And, Wildcats, you know, 13. the Pirates and us both got here separately yesterday and definitely uh, a well worth the wait as it was originally scheduled for, I think, February 13th. Here we are a month later, happy to be playing this game. We would be stuck in Louisiana had the original game be played because it occurred right at the beginning of the snowpocalypse. It would have occurred right at the beginning of the snowpocalypse. Fortunately for us, we get warm weather, nice breeze, we're out in the sun, in the fine state of Louisiana. Much better than the projected, like, whatever it was, 30 degrees when uh, we originally were going to be scheduled to sit outside. Right. Charles and Leon back deep to receive this kickoff from Will Herbst. I think it would have been colder than 30, actually. <laughs> the Pirates coming off of a – it would have been. The Pirates coming off of a nine-yard touchdown from Gilpin to Robinson as total other comes from – 
Will Herbst, it's a high one that goes to Leon. Leon follows a couple blockers, bounces outside, goes backwards as he's brought down at the 26-yard line. Austin Castilleja making the tackle for the Pirates. Great effort because had he broken that tackle from Castilleja, had a lot of green there on the left side that he could have taken advantage Leon of. Leon on the return for the Wildcats. He would have had Pirates taking angles to stop him. And he'll mark the ball at the 26-yard line. Defe First and 10, Louisiana College. Pirate defense needs to step up here, try to get the ball back quickly and see if they can tie this score up. First and 10 for the Wildcats at their own 26-yard line. 12-17 left to play in the second quarter. Sal Palmero back out there at the quarterback. He has Milburn to his left, and he'll give the give to him. He goes around right end, and... Gets across the 30, stays on his feet. Everybody thought the play was dead. I think the officials did too, but they'll go ahead and give him those extra yards. So the officials did not blow the play dead. He stayed on his feet and a solid pickup of yards Never there by actually Devin James Briscoe. Powell Jr. That's Peyton Ludeman had an opportunity to stop him, but he was able to break that tackle and get outside for a few extra yards and the first down. Devin Briscoe lined up on the left to Palmero. Two receivers on the left side, a single receiver on the right, first and 10 from their own 39-yard line on the option. It goes back to Briscoe. He makes one pirate miss and is angled out at the 40. A flag comes in That's near Briscoe the, once again, trying to get around the corner area the where the, a hold would have probably happened. Right there on the edge is likely a hold. Jules Williams there to the clean up that run. They force the running back deep. So he didn't get, hardly get back to the line of scrimmage. He may have picked up about a half yard, but that's before the penalty flag, and it looks like it's going to go against Louisiana College. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, number 88 of the offense. 15-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Race first down. So it's a personal foul, not a hold, and that backs up the Wildcats 15 yards from the spot of the foul, and they officially mark them at the, wow, they're backing up even further than I thought, the 19-yard line. It's second and 25. 11.49 left to play in the second quarter. And I think that this is only the second penalty that we've seen all day as, yeah, I thought the math was wrong right there. They're going to move him to the 24-yard line. And But the, the other one being that Jules Williams pass interference, which looked like a good defensive play from my angle, but they called that one. So I think it's only the second penalty of the game, one on each team. Correct. Ball on the 24-yard line. The yard to gain is the Louisiana College 49. Palmero will try a play action. Has time to throw. Throws across the middle. Incomplete intended for Leon. And Kanan Leon could have picked up a lot That's of chunk yards Number there, six, but Kanan couldn't get it Leon. off of his shoulder pads. And he had to make a little bit of an off-balance effort to try to make the pass, and that could have prevented any gain had he made the reception, but he's unable to get his hands on the ball and secure it. So it'll be third down and very long for the Wildcats. Canyon Leon's been a pretty good receiver for Sal Palmero so far this afternoon. 11.26 is where the clock stops and a new play coming in from the Louisiana College sideline with 13 seconds on the play clock. Briscoe moves over to the right now of Palmero. Two receivers on both sides from the left hash mark. Palmero will drop back. Throws to the left side and it is incomplete. Out, out of bounds. On, yep, on the left side intended for White. That'll yes, bring out the punting unit and the 18, pirate defense does a great job of three and out. Well, you count the penalty play four and out. For the Wildcats. Let them hear you, Wildcat fans. Clock stops at 11.20 left to play here in the first half. 13 to 7. Wildcats with the lead in the football, but they have a long way to go. It's third and 25. The yard to gain is their own 49-yard line. They're going to pooch kick this. It's third down. So Palmero oh, will drop back, down. steps up in the pocket, throws across the middle, and it's incomplete to Leon. He had it on his hands and couldn't come down with the catch. That would have made it a fourth and manageable. I, I, I had it fourth down already, so yeah, I apologize so to those Leon trusting the complete. scoreboard. <laughs> it is now fourth and 25, a forced punt by the Pirate defense. I, I was about to say, that would be bold going for it. I thought, that's why I thought that they would certainly just do a pooch punt <laughs> with, with the quarterback, Palmero, but obviously on third down they were going to try to convert. So it'll be Hunter Martinson, the sophomore kicker, sending this one. Back to Austin Castilleja waiting behind the 35-yard line in Pirates territory. 
It's a low snap taken by Martinson. He gets a good kickoff, and Castillo off the backtrack as this one takes a bounce at around the 35, goes out of bounds at, I think, that spot on the field. Yeah, yeah they'll just round up if not, and that's where the Pirates will take over at their own 35-yard yeah, like line. Intelligent the, uh, play by Austin Castillejo the there to stay away the from Pirates. the ball and avoid touching the it and giving the opportunity for the Wildcats the to get it back. Quarter. It's a significantly decent spot for the Pirate offense to start this their third or fourth row. I think this is their third row. We'll go third, fourth. Yeah, we'll say fourth. 11.08 left to play in the first half. Pirates looking to get the lead for the first time this afternoon. They or trailed 13 to nothing. A tie. Yeah, well, that would obviously be the goal. At least a tie here as Johnny Tasigui is in the backfield with Landry Gilpin. Two receivers to the right, and now Castiel will go in motion. It's a handoff to Tasigui as he counters back around the right hash mark, and he slides to the 44-yard line for yeah, a solid well, pick of about nine yards on first down. It's a great job of following his lead block and picking up a nice game. Line. Bring up second and one. Bring up Wildcat fans. That offensive momentum for the Pirates is, is in effect at the moment. Clock moving at 10.41 left to play in the second quarter. Powell and Castillejo lined up on the left side. Biggers lined up wide right as he lets the official know he's on. He's a receiver eligible. Tasigui is in the backfield with Gilpin. Gilpin play action, and he is brought down from behind the tackle. Being made by number one, who is not on our roster. Interesting. He's not on the two deep either. That's Michael Ladden. Number one. Michael Ladden, the according to the PA. Sack. And so the oh, loss yes. of about six is going to make third it. Third down. Third and seven. 10.04 left to play here in the second. Line. From the 39-yard line in their own territory, the Pirates trying to pick up a big third down. Biggers lined up on the right. Two receivers on the left side for Gilpin in the shotgun. And I think a flag comes in here. This probably goes against the Pirates. False start. That's an unfortunate call for the Pirates. That'll back them up and make this third down conversion that much tougher. False start. Offense number 67. Fabio Pelney, third down. 9.47 left to play in the second as the Pirates move behind the chains here. Third and 11 now. Third down, still third and 11. Might be an obvious passing down here, but we'll see what the Pirates like to do. Not quite obvious, but... It is a passing down for sure. You would assume so here. Unless you're ready to punt it back. Gilpin will drop back. Rolls out to the right. Looking for Biggers, who's free down the right sideline. He's going to lob it deep, and it's not going to be anywhere close. And also a flag comes in on the play in the area of a hold. We'll yes, see if this is declined. Bounds. It is likely a hold. It could be yeah, one of the crackback the blocks that were called against the Wildcats as well. I didn't see what initiated the flag, but it is in the area of that type of penalty. We'll see what the referee has to say. The official's still discussing it, so they can give it to the White Hat correctly here. Holding of an elder receiver, defense number one. That's a first down for the Pirates. Automatic first down. You certainly know your rules as soon as he, did, he didn't even have to complete his announcement. That's a first down, and you knew it there, Chuck. So a big, big break. break there for the Pirates. Big break for the Pirates, and they would kind of dug themselves in a, a mini hole on this drive, third and long when they had third and one, and now keeps the drive alive. 9-18 left to play in the second. 13-7, Wildcats with a six-point lead. Two men in the backfield with Gilpin. Castillejo lined up to his left. Dawson Gonzalez lined up to his right. And a handoff to Castillejo. He tries to stretch it around the right side, spins away from one hit, and then he runs into another, and... And only picks up two Number yards on the play. Demario he was able to spin out of the out of tackle of the first defender, the but that caused him to take a pretty good Latin shot with, by the second defender. Big hit for the Wildcats. He gained a couple of yards, however, second down second and down eight. For the Pirates. Clock under nine minutes to play here until halftime. Anthony Stevens and Mason Biggers lined up on the left side. 
Ethan Powell lined up on the right. Look for the pass to Anthony Stevens on the deep left side here on second down. Or, yeah, second down. Second and eight. Gilpin will drop back. And he throws it across the middle to Powell. Powell's a lot of space across the middle. Ducks his shoulder and gets to the yard to gain, I believe. This will be a first down for the Pirates. It is a first down. And they used Stevens as a bit of a decoy as they ran the left side of the, well, the right side of the Wildcats secondary down the field, which opened up the field for Powell across the middle. Pick up the first down. Good pass from Gilpin as well. 8.15 left to play in the second quarter, and the Pirates are going to huddle. We might as well compliment the protection on that play as well. Gilpin had plenty of time. Steve. Good execution across the board. And it's the same set here as Anthony Stevens and Mason Biggers lined up on the left side and Ethan Powell on the right side on first and 10 inside Wildcat territory at the 46-yard line. Gilpin will escape the pocket and tuck and run across the 40 to the 35, and he's brought down from behind at around the 25-yard line. Landry Gilpin in this second quarter has been doing it all with his legs. What an effort by Gilpin. He just showed his great vision, and his moves are not significant. They're subtle, but they fake the defender out. He was able to pick up an additional six to eight yards after that initial move. Great effort, and we hope for the injured player for the Wildcats that he's okay and that it's nothing more than a cramp. It looks like it's 23. That's going to be Rashawn West. You know, we're going to have to get some clarification on here because I was going based off the roster that doesn't have a 23, <laughs> and we don't have a one who's been playing Woody pretty well. Did you happen to jot down his name? I, I did not. I, I repeated it, but I did not write it down. He was on the defensive side of the ball, and uh, he's not on the two-deep roster or the regular roster. Well, of course we'll we have would. to figure that out here. Oh, here he is. It's Michael uh, Latin, Latin or Michael Latin. Okay, Number there you go. That's right. Rashawn Micah. West. Coming to the sideline. West is going to be helped off of the field. That's not a good sign. But he is putting some pressure on the leg. Yeah, he's trying to walk a little bit with some help. The clock stopped at 7.47 for the injury timeout after the Gilpin first down for Southwestern. They're at the Louisiana College 25-yard line. Be first and 10 for the Pirates. Pirates trail 13 to 7. They're going to huddle here before they get to the line of scrimmage. Dawson Gonzalez in the backfield with Austin Castilleja between Landry Gilpin. Mason Biggers isolated on the right side as Castilleja clears out to the left. First and 10 from the 25, Gilpin. Passes over to the left side, and Castilleja will now do a double pass, and Anthony Stevens wide open in the end zone for the Pirates' touchdown. They're going to say that it was a forward pass on the initial one as a flag comes down. Either that or a, an ineligible receiver was downfield. We'll see what the call is. So you can take away the 25-yard touchdown most likely here as this flag will probably cost the Pirates' yards instead of be six points on the scoreboard. Costier wanting to challenge for the leading passer for the Pirates today. There's no foul. They're going to wave it off, it's and it touchdown. is a touchdown for the Pirates. The was a lateral. Result of the play is a touchdown. They rule it a lateral, and Austin Costieja had a big passing play to Landry Gilpin earlier this quarter. Now he has a big passing play to Anthony Stevens for a 25-yard touchdown to tie this ball game up at 13. And that's the first touchdown reception for Stevens this season, and, and we expect to see more in the coming weeks from Anthony. Will Herps will line up the point after attempt. He sends that one through the uprights and good. And the Pirates have their first lead of the afternoon. Extra point is good. 7 I'm Carl Stoning along with Chuck Crazy, Mickey quarter. Holden on the camera. Happy you guys Pirates joined us here from one, Pineville, 14, Louisiana, 13. which, yes, it is right next to Alexandria, and I haven't quite been able to figure out the dis difference about 16 hours here, Chuck. Right, fans, it was a good Wildcat trip, Wildcat though, Carl. There. We had a, a decent time despite driving what in, in late traffic. That I mean, There was no traffic because we were driving here so late. So, Yeah, we had to check in on the – Volleyball match. I have to make sure that it was streaming correctly as they had their first home game. So congratulations to the volleyball season for getting underway. They had their home opener taken away from them because of the snowpocalypse. And 
Yeah, then we uh, have the senior day, which is a makeup for the kind of senior day that was stolen away from the men's and women's basketball teams, also happening at the Robertson Center back in Georgetown today. So lots of pirate football, basketball, and volleyball here on SHN Sports. We're happy that you guys can tune in live or in the future on this broadcast. Following the 25-yard touchdown from Austin Castilleja to Anthony Stevens, Will Herbst will kick this one away with 7.18 left to play in the second quarter. The Wildcats playing from behind for the first time the this afternoon. Fire to the 14-13 lead. Will Herbst sends this one back deep to Kane and Leon. Leon takes it at the 12. He'll switch back to the right hash marks, tries to go laterally down the 20-yard line, looking to get away from Norris, turns the corner at the 25 and gets out of bounds just short of the 30-yard line. They will round it up and give it to the 30-yard line, and it will be first and 10 for the Wildcats. Major George was looking for a holding penalty against the Wildcats, but he was unfortunate in not getting it. He got tied up a little bit by a blocker, not happy. But the gain minimal on the return. To see the defense can continue that momentum that they've carried over the last couple of Wildcat possessions. 7 10 off to play in the second quarter. Palmero and the Wildcat offense trying to retake the lead as they find themselves behind for the first time this afternoon. And it's not Palmero in there at quarterback, it's a Wildcat, and it'll be a Briscoe run. Briscoe finds some space across the 40, 35 yard line to the 40 and picks up yeah, 11 yards. Quarterback number 15, James Powell Jr. Oh, James Powell Jr. getting the kid. So, Patrick Nicholas, 15, not 16. Patrick Nicholas making the tackle for the Pirates and preventing a, a really significant gain there. So, James Powell Jr., the new quarterback, he'll hand it off to Milburn, who runs around left end and picks up a couple Mark yards Jaylen as Milburn he was first hit initially run. by William Whitehurst, the fifth. Seth McCrum cleaning it up there, number 99. Minimal gain for the Wildcats on that. Two-yard pickup for Milburn. He's up Clock moving, 6.30 left to play in the second quarter. Second and eight. Ball on the 43-yard line. Wildcats in their own territory here. James Powell Jr. in the shotgun. He sends Dunn in motion, and now he'll try and run around left end and gets Powell, to midfield, and he's keeper. just short of the first down Very by keeping it on the run to the left side and fourth down up here. It was a good effort Third and down. a good read by they'll the quarterback to keep the, the ball. He rode midfield. the running back Third with down. the ball in the pocket for a little while, games. pulled it out, and picked up a nice gain. Third and short now. And it looks like some movement on the offensive line, and the officials might go ahead and call this offsides. It will be an offsides and an automatic first down for the Wildcats. Offsides. Defense, number 33. Five-yard penalty results in the first down. Edmundo Suarez being called for the offsides penalty. will give the Louisiana College Wildcats a first down here. Yeah. That's a first down with the Wildcats to the 45-yard line of the Pirates. 531 left to play in the second quarter. Powell will give the handoff to Milburn, and he tries to bounce around his right guard, and he has stopped on the play, Mark and Taylor a Milburn. good defensive play the there by the Gage Bernard. He's having a pretty good half here, Gage Bernard, at the linebacker position. That's his third solo tackle. Two-yard pickup for the Wildcats, brings up second and eight. Clock picks back up at 5.09, left to play here in the second quarter. Powell in the shotgun. He has Briscoe to his left, Milburn to his right. Two receivers on the right side, a single receiver on the left, second and eight, and a keeper for Powell, and he lowers his shoulder after picking up a couple Powell yards to the 40. To the 40 He's not going to knock Gage against. Bernard backwards, and he didn't. Bernard there with the stop. It'll bring up third and five. Good effort from the linebacker. Two plays in a row for the middle linebacker, Bernard. 435 left to play until halftime, and a big third down here for the Pirates as the Pirate defense working with a one-point lead for the first time here this afternoon. A blitz being shown by the Pirates, and Powell will get new instructions from the sidelines with 13 seconds on the play clock. Might have been a, a little bit of deception there from Bernard Century. We'll see if he comes on this play. 
Briscoe to the right, Milburn to the left, and it'll be a direct snap to Powell, and then he'll option it here to Briscoe, and he is laid out. We've been talking about him all day. Chuck William Whitehurst, the fifth. What a hit, and we have a flag thrown along the sidelines, and that's going to be an unfortunate call if it goes against the Pirates. Eli Norris comes out of the sidelines, and some jawing going on there, and that could have been a really big stop on third down. Let's see what the laundry will result this play in. Could be a momentum killer for the Pirates. Lots of, lots of talk in the stands here. There's a long discussion about what occurred that resulted in the – by both teams on the play. They all Dead set. Ball, a yes. sportsmanlike conduct, defense number four. Dead ball, a sportsmanlike conduct, offense number ten. Tells you all set. Result of the play is a fourth down. So it is not a break for – for the Wildcats, team. yeah, well, for the Wildcats, they they could have potentially gotten the first down. Instead, it will bring up fourth down, and they'll bring out their punting unit. Well, the Pirates need to be careful not to get involved in any of the shenanigans that may occur extracurricular-wise after plays as it can result in sustained drives for your opponent. And we're going to have a punt here. Hunter Martinson. Lined up to receive this punt, but I get the feeling there's a fake of the brew. It could be. Well, it's About a little long, actually. Eight here yards is. to convert, but you're at midfield, and it's a punt. And a fair catch called for for Picasso Eja, but he avoids it, and it'll be downed inside the 25-yard line. Let's see yeah, where they officially down, mark the, the first touch. But the Wildcats around the 21-yard line. That was uh, first and ten. A little bit different of a play. It looked like the Wildcats were up to something despite it being fourth and eight, and it ends up being a solid enough punt where Casieja can't return. 3.38 left to play until halftime, and the Pirates looking to add on to their 14-13 to lead. And we'll get a taste of the four-minute offense here from Coach Austin's offensive unit here at 3.38 remaining. Going to try to move it down the field and get points here before half. So Landry Gilpin. We'll line up with Dawson Gonzalez to his left, Austin Casieja to his right. Two receivers on the left side, and Ethan Powell lined up on the right side. First and 10 from the 21-yard line, Pirates in their own territory. Gilpin will drop back. Scans across the middle of the field, looks back to the right, and then Ethan Powell jumps to make the catch at the 30, and a solid gain on first down. They mark him down at the 29, so he'll pick up about seven yards for the Pirates. Big target, Ethan Powell, out there. He found a soft spot in the zone and stood there. Gilpin found him and threw it a little bit high, but it's not very high when it's Ethan Powell on the other end. Yeah, Ethan Powell listed at 6'5", 207, a sophomore. Second down and two. For I don't know. He looks a little bigger than that. At least he plays bigger than that. Well, he's still pretty big, and the cleats make you about 6'6". Six, six. That's a good point. Three minutes left to play in the first half. Gilpin in the shotgun. Thought about taking the quarterback run and instead will be taken down in the backfield. No opportunity for Gilpin to make a play there as he broke down to, to decide which way to run. And Michael hey. Latin with a nice tackle. Yeah, the Wildcat defender Ladden there to make sure he didn't get any gain. In fact, maybe even lost a couple of yards. Brings up third down. Number one. 231 left to play no in this first sack. half. And the Pirates are the only team that's down. used a timeout so Michael far this ball game. For the Wildcats. That means they have two left, and Wildcats have all three. Play clock down to seven seconds here as Gilpin lines up in the shotgun. The corners will press. A zone read for Gilpin as he fakes the handoff to Gonzalez, and now he throws it to Dawson Gonzalez. He makes the catch and will try and scamper his way to about the 30-yard yeah, line. That's complete. not enough to get the Big first down, and fourth down Let's comes up for down. the Pirates. It was a good effort by Gonzalez. Gilpin had to dump it off to him as the primary receivers were covered downfield by the Wildcat call. defense. First charge of the first Gonzalez half. had a good effort to try to convert, Two minutes but remaining in the, first half of the, the Wildcat defense the there Wildcat to prevent field. any conversion and force a punt situation with two cover. minutes Wildcat remaining for man. the Pirates. Then we'll honor and recognize so the first timeout charged here to the Wildcats. Wildcat they have two members, left with two minutes left to play well in the first half. Southwestern, their defense has really found some momentum, and they hope to carry that with them into the locker room. Well, and the Wildcats want to snatch that momentum back here with two minutes remaining in the half and see if they can convert with their offense going into halftime. So 
It's going to be the momentum held by the Pirate defense versus the Wildcat trying to snatch that momentum away. The Pirate defense has played well all day, but they've improved with each drive. James Powell Jr. was the quarterback for the first time after Sal Palmero left the game. No update on Palmero. Ken Leon back deep for and Wildcats. I would assume James Powell Jr. will get another opportunity here as it'll be Caden Leon back deep at around the 40-yard line in Wildcat territory to receive this punt from Will Earps. It is only fourth and two. Maybe the, Wild, the Pirates might have something up their sleeve, but they do get the ball back in the second half. And they're pretty deep in your end of the field to go That's true forward too. or even uh, have a fake there. It'll be taken by Leon here, and he'll try to stutter step at the 41-yard line, and then he is slung down on the play. On the a nice return. defensive stop there by Patrick Nicholas, the strong safety on special teams. will stop at the 41-yard line. It's good field position for the Wildcats here with a minute 49. Plenty of time to move the ball down the field and convert to points. First Pirate and 10 defense is going to have to stiffen up here and try to at the 41 yard minimize line. any damage. Downfield down especially. Remaining in the first half. Where you at, Wildcat fans? Because Palmero back in the game looking to throw the ball. Minute 49 left to play. Where Two timeouts left for both there. teams here as we're coming to a close in the first half. It is Palmero back in at the quarterback position. Two receivers on both sides. He'll drop back for a pass. Scan to his left, pass to his left, and that one's way low intended for White. That's a miscommunication. Either the receiver ran the wrong route or Palmero threw to a, a route. He thought the receiver was going to run based on the defense. Regardless, it was about four yards away from the receiver, short, and to the outside. No no way he could have caught that. This will probably be that Louisiana air we were talking about here as the clock stops at a minute 33, and they're probably going to air it out every play here until the end of the first half. Palmero in the shotgun on second and 10. Has time to throw in the pocket, steps up, and then fires deep down the field. This one intended for White Falls incomplete, and Jules Williams on the coverage makes sure that that one hits the turf. That was a great play by Jules Williams because White had a step on him, and the pass was there. Williams able to get his hand in there and uh, cause a problem and pass prevent incomplete. him from making that reception. They'll let White catch his breath as he was the one who went deep on that route, third and 10 from their own 41-yard line clock stopped at 127 left to play here in the first half. And if the Pirates get a stop here, you know, that kind of sets up an opportunity for them to kind of run their own two-minute offense. There is plenty of time if they can get a stop here and a, use a timeout to stop the clock. Palmero will drop back. He's under pressure, escapes one tackle, steps up in the pocket, and then he gets away from another, throws off bounce, incomplete. The clock stops at 120 left to play in the first half, and the punting unit is going to come out here for the, for the Wildcats. And the Pirates don't have to burn that timeout, which they can use offensively here with a minute 20. Castilleja will hang out around the 20-yard line waiting for this punt from Martinson. It's fourth and 10 with a minute 20 left to play in the second quarter. Pirates up 14 to 13. And whistle stop this play before the punt gets off. Probably going to be offside. Nope, they're going to call a false start. Making this a little bit harder for Hunter Martinson. I'll start. Offense, number 53. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. So that backs up Martinson. And Cats still punting on the fourth down. And yeah, the Wildcats to the 36-yard line in their own territory. Martinson looking to square this one up at around the 21-yard line. And Castilleja moves up to about the 30. Minute 19 left to play in the first half. It's a low snap taken by Martins, and he still gets a pretty solid height-wise punt off, and that one will bounce and take a very favorable roll for the Wildcats across and the 35 to the 30. Without the 30 that roll, it wouldn't have been a very good punt, and he did a good job of handling a low snap and getting the punt off, but you're right, it went straight up in the air, but the when the ball hit the ground, it had a nice roll. 
Better than a yeah, block punt. The ball. First attempt At least for the Wildcats. Right. Southwestern yeah, will get the ball back with a minute seven line. left to play in the second quarter. They lead it 14 oh, to 13. Fans, let that defense and the ball there. rolled all the way to the 28 oh, yard line in Pirate territory. I'd, I'm interested to see how conservatively the Pirates approach this last minute and seven here of the first half. They will get the ball back to start the second quarter and they have two, the second half and they have two timeouts in their back pocket. Gilpin will pass on first down. He'll step up in the pocket and throw and finds Mason Biggers on the right side, just shy of the 40 for a Pirate first down. That should stop the clock at 58 seconds to play in the first half. At least momentarily for them to Big move the chains. The Brandon Pirates back Isaac. up on the line of scrimmage, ready to snap that next play. Still first down for the Pirates. It's the minute seven drill here for Southwestern. Gilpin in the shotgun. One step drop, and he finds Anthony Stevens wide open in the middle of the field, across the 45 to midfield, and then spins into Wildcat territory at the 46 yard line. Another first down for the Pirates. Good yards after for catch for Devine Stevens. Weathersby in there for the stop. And the clock picks back up at 35 seconds left to play here the in the first half. Pirates still have two timeouts left. Gilpin in the shotgun. Two receivers lined up wide on the left side and a couple on the right. And a pass is deflected, hits the turf, and falls incomplete with 22 seconds and left to play as tipped. Gilpin looked to the right side to maybe get it to Mason Biggers. That's number one, Michael Latin getting his hands in the Michael air. Michael Latin was the one who deflected the pass of the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second and ten. It'll stop the clock on the, the incompletion. Pirates. Saving the Pirates from the having to down. use either of their final two timeouts. Probably saving one for a potential field goal attempt if they can get in range of Herbst. Gilpin will drop back here on second and ten. He lobs this one to Dawson Gonzalez, who has a lot of green in front of him. He's across at the 35, shifts over to the 30, and he is brought down for the Pirates' first down, and the Pirates will use a timeout with 13 seconds left as they get the ball from their fullback out of the backfield to the 31-yard line. Timeout. Another well-designed play. You run all second your receivers downfield, forcing the secondary Mario and the Weathers linebackers the deep, the and then the you bring Wildcats. Dawson Gonzalez across the middle, not only to make a great catch, but he also timeout. made a great move to pick up an additional eight, nine yards on that play. They're getting close to Will Herp's range here despite the wind. It'd be worth an attempt if you can't get down close enough to, to try to throw a touchdown pass here. Well, while we mentioned field goal opportunities, Will Herps would have the wind in his face as it seems like it's shifted back towards that north end zone. It keeps shifting either across or in the Pirates' face. So it's either in our face or it's in the Pirates' face so far today. Gilpin. Ready to go after the Pirates' timeout. They have one left. 13 seconds left in the first half. First down for the Pirates. Anthony Stevens and Mason Biggers lined up on the right side. Line. Ethan Powell and Austin Castilleja on the left side. Dawson Gonzalez is the fullback. Gilpin in the shotgun will drop back. Scans across the middle, steps up to the right side, and then lobs it up for Powell. And Powell can't come down with it. And the defensive Pass play incomplete. made by number 30, who's also not on our roster, if you can believe it. Or excuse me, I He's beg your pardon. Probably on the two deep, I think but not a guarantee. Yeah, you know. He's not on the two deep either. We'll have to write a letter. <laughs> O only Deontay seven Jeff. seconds remaining here. And on that stop. Pirates still have one timeout. You want to get about 12. 15 yards, pick up a first down here, use that timeout, and give Erbst an opportunity at minimum if you're not going to throw it into the end zone here. We'll see how quickly the Pirates can work on second and 10 from the Wildcat 31-yard line. Southwestern up 14 to 13, looking to add on to it. A pump fake from Gilpin, and clock will probably expire as he fires this one towards the end zone. Anthony Stevens on the jump ball, can't come down with it. And in contest of that, also number 32, we need to get a, Got uh, a flag down. A better roster here as there's a flag the down on the play. We have a flag in the backfield. Let's see if this will be a dead ball down here. Could be a personal foul roughing the passer. Personal foul roughing the passer. Defense number 97. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. An automatic first down. We'll have an untimed down. Untimed down it is. So it'll be a Will Herbs attempt to go into the half. And yeah, with no time on the clock, Pirates will line up for a field goal. 
We got Wildcat fans. A 33 yard there. attempt. Herbs will kick it away from the 23. Herbs from 33 yards. Through the uprights and good, and that is how the second half and will end. The Pirates add on three more to their lead. They take a 17-13 lead into At the, the, the half, locker room Western tent that they have set Blue up on the other side of the Wildcats. field. We'll take a break here on SHN Sports. I'm Carl Shelling along with Chuck Tracy, and Wildcat we will field. have the Wildcat marching band performing at the half if you want a little old-school entertainment. Happy that they were able to put together a marching and band folks, here and uh, bring it out to the field so we can have some old school entertainment as we don't see too many that. during COVID era. That's right. Always enjoy it. We'll see y'all at the start of the third quarter, y'all. Along with the rolling stove of food trucks down there, be sure to get you something good to eat. Now entering the field is the 2021 edition of the Louisiana College Wildcat Marching Band under the direction of Dr. Joshua Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, today's performance features music from the 1939 classic that we all know and love, The Wizard of Oz, along with the 1975 Broadway hit, The Wiz.
Where's your orange pants? Oh, they weren't clean. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Louisiana College Wildcat Marching Band. The drum major is the Mission and Ministry Senior Josh Sanchez. The brass captain is the Mission and Ministry Senior Nate Gardner. The woodwind captain is the Music Education Senior Ashton Theodore. The drum captain is Music Sophomore Devin Williamson. And the color guard is instructed by Megan Smith. And a big congratulations to our Wildcat Band Seniors Isaiah Moore and Nathaniel Gardner. And now coming up, ladies and gentlemen, we direct your sight to midfield. We have two young ladies. We're wrapping up their careers as Louisiana College cheerleaders. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lakin Rochelle. A cheerleader for three years. She is from Baton Rouge. Her major is elementary education. Her accomplishments here at Louisiana College, maintaining a 3.66 average throughout college, being on the Dean's List, former chaplain and current president of the Pro-Life Club and student intern. Her life goal, desired career, my future plans are to become an elementary teacher and be a positive role model for the next generation and also to coach. She has joined by her parents, father, Steve Rochelle, and her mother, Dana Rochelle. Ladies and gentlemen, senior cheerleader, Lakin Rochelle. And senior cheerleader, 
Anna McDern. She has been in cheerleading for LC for two years. Her hometown is also Baton Rouge. Her major, marketing and management. Her accomplishments at Louisiana College, the 2017 Smith Scholar. Serves as a navigator and ambassador and a member of the SGA. She is a student intern worker in the president's office. Her life goal, desired career, currently pursuing a job in marketing for after graduation in May. And Anna is joined by her mother, Patty Mathern. Ladies and gentlemen, senior cheerleader Anna Mathern. Once again, we'd like to say congratulations to all of our Wildcat seniors. You certainly have made Louisiana College proud, the community of Pineville and all of Central Louisiana as a whole. We wish you all the best in your future endeavors and may God bless.
Western leading Louisiana College 17 to 13. I'm Carl Schoening along with Chuck Crazy, Mickey Holden, our camera operator. And Chuck, uh, before we get into stats here, you're, you're just your thoughts on Southwestern's first half. Well, there's a little tentativeness, at least initially defensively, especially on third down. The Wildcats were able to convert early on a couple of drives that resulted in touchdowns. But the Pirate defense continued to improve, and they put the clamps down over the last couple of drives for the Wildcats. And the offense stepped up, scored a couple of touchdowns, and now the Pirates leading here as well as a field goal. Uh, in terms of stats, we got Both teams have double-digit first downs. The Southwestern University Southwestern. Pirates have 14 Wide first downs, and Louisiana Carolina. College has 10 individual stats. I'd like to point out Gilpin has seven rushes for 69 yards, the longest being 21. The next closest is Dawson Gonzalez. He has three rushes for 10 yards, longest six. In the passing category for the Pirates, Gilpin 10, for 15, 10 of 15 for 82 yards and a touchdown at a 16-yard pass. He's been sacked three times. Austin Costieja playing from the running back position has two completions on two attempts for 54 yards and a touchdown, longest being 29 yards. In the receiving category for the Pirates, Stevens leads with three targets, two receptions, 41 yards and a touchdown. Add Joey Robinson, one target, one reception, eight yards for a touchdown. And that are the two touchdowns for the Pirates. Gonzalez also has two receptions along with Biggers. In the defensive tackle category, Patrick Nicholas has three unassisted tackles, oh yeah, two assisted fans. tackles, total of five. Gage Bernard has three unassisted tackles and one assisted tackle and we're getting ready for the second half here. It'll be Martinson who will kick it away from the 35 as the Pirates deferred to start this ball game and another touchback for Martinson. He has had three kickoffs, kick three off touchbacks and touchback. that definitely limits Looking what the, the Pirates, Pirates can do on the special team side of things. So with a 17-13 lead, Landry Gilpin and the Pirates will come back out on the offense. The Pirates need to capitalize of this advantage of having the kick with the lead here to open the second Who's half. They can convert this into points and make some separation between Balls them out. and the Wildcats. Got a fresh 15 minutes on the clock here as we are starting the second half and the first play from scrimmage. Andrew Gilpin has Dawson Gonzalez lined up behind him. Pistol formation. Two receivers tight on the left side in the slot. It's Castilleja Powell on the bottom of your screen. Castilleja goes in motion and it's an option play for Gilpin here with Castilleja running to his right. Gilpin will toss it at the last second as he was being brought down and it's caught by Castilleja who gets it a couple more yards across the 30 to the 31 yard line. Saw yeah, gain about six yards on first side. down. Gilpin has to be the calmest pitch quarterback on the option that I've ever seen. He waits until the very last minute, and it's just a little flick right out to Costier for a couple extra yards. Second and four here as the clock keeps moving at 1440 left to play in the third quarter. Two men in the backfield with Gilpin. He has Costier lined up to his left. A hard count will draw a defender to almost jump the snap. And it'll be a design run here for Gilpin as he takes it around right end. And he is hit after picking up a couple yards to about the 33. And that's a that's good swarm by the Wildcat, Wildcat defense stop. to prevent Gilpin from getting anywhere near the line to gain for the first down. It's going to be, he basically gained a yard. It's going to be third and three. Michael Latin number one. In Michael on the Latin stop. was the one who made the stop here and brings up third Along down. Number 27, He's Weathersby. certainly leading the Wildcat here defensive Wildcat charge, Latin. Third and three. Pirates on their own 32-yard line. Casilla goes in motion here as Gilpin gives it to him on the option. He follows the block from Dawson Gonzalez, and he picks up the first down. Great execution on that play. He didn't try to take more than was there. Castilleja followed his block, picked the up the yard to gain for a first down. And that moves the Pirates to their own 36-yard line and gives them a fresh set of downs. They need to make this drive as lengthy as possible. They need to eat up yards, eat up time, and result in points. They took a huddle. There's 22 seconds left on the play clock as they line up here with two men in the backfield with Gilpin. Castilla goes in motion for another option play, and Gilpin decides to tuck it back to the middle and duck his head for a gain of a couple to the 40, excuse me, the 38-yard line. Two-yard gain. 
He did not like what he saw when he cut up the middle. Big number 99 for the uh, Wildcats. Kalen Wilbert, Wilbert Robertson. Robertson there to scare the the quarterback into diving down. Will Robertson, listen, at six foot 375, and he looks every bit of it. Yeah, I'm going to say that's an underestimate. He certainly got some feet. 1245. For such a big fella. <laughs> 1245 left to play in the third, second and eight for the Pirates. Gilpin rolls to the right, and Casiella makes the catch on the right sideline, picks up the first down near midfield. Pirates remain in their own territory, but they do get the first that down. Castilla has been a, quite a weapon for Gilpin here in the first Just half and first the down. Pirate offense, as we demonstrated no, no, talking about the, the first half there. stats. He has two touch, or one touchdown passes, one touchdown pass with two completions from the running back position. 12.25 left here in the third quarter, and the Pirates working on a methodical drive as they make their way to their own 46-yard line, first and 10. Gilpin in the shotgun, Dawson Gonzalez to his left, Austin Castilla to his right. Gonzalez quickly shifted into a pistol, and now it's an option play to the left side. Gilpin will keep it as he crosses midfield into Wildcat territory. He picks up about five yards on first down. That's another example of, of Gilpin being very patient and calm and waiting until the last moment to decide whether or not to pitch. Just the look to the pitch man caused the defense to shift outside and allowed him to pick five up a couple more up yards. The Pirates bring second up five. 11.45 left to play in the second quarter, and they shift out. Wilbert Robertson as he comes off of the field, and that opens up a little bit more space in the middle of the field. Gilpin in the shotgun. Trips to the right, single receiver to the left. Toss out to the right side. Castilleja is brought down in the backfield for a tackle and a nice defensive yeah, play made by Julius Johnson. Julius Makes Johnson. it third and ten. I, you know, for a moment I thought Castilleja was looking to throw downfield for his third attempt, but he tucked it and was tripped up. Actually lost a little more than five, so it's going to be third and 11. 11 minutes to play, and the clock moving here in the third quarter. Big play here for the Pirates. If they want to drive down and get points here in this opening drive, they need to convert here. It is two down territory near midfield for some situations. We'll see what the Pirates decide. Pirates lead 17 to 13. It'll be a pass play from Gil Penn, and Ethan Powell had to trying to adjust That's himself on the back shoulder fade bring couldn't bring it down pirates. out of bounds and that'll bring a fourth down for pirates i really thought he was uh going to be able to make that adjustment it was a great effort but the pass just too far outside a back shoulder fade it's a tough pass and on a throw to make and then it's a tough catch for the receiver but they almost pulled off the execution instead it brings up fourth down and moving back to get the receive this kickoff for Louisiana College is Kanan Leon. Herps will put total leather on a rugby style kick about 33 from his own 33 yard line and it'll be taken by Leon at about the 20 and he scampers his way to the 25. Maybe picks up one more before Never he's swarmed by a, a crew of Pirates. Jules Williams head. sticking his head in there. Number 21 making sure minimal gain on the return. It'll be first and ten for the Wildcats. Clock at 10.34 here when the Wildcats take over for their first offensive possession of the second half. They trail 17 to 13. They led this game 13-0, and since then the Pirates have scored 17 unanswered. Sal Palmero, the quarterback in the shotgun. Milburn with the give on the zone read. He tries to stretch it to the left side of the field. He's able to get away from a couple of Pirates, and then he runs into one of his own blockers trying Mark to follow Kevin the Milburn blocker. He gets it to the 35-yard line for a solid gain on first down. Pirates had an opportunity to get him in the backfield, but he was able to break that initial tackle and get outside and, and get a nice gain, as you said, about seven yards. Seven-yard pickup for Milburn. It'll bring up second and three for the Wildcats. Second and three for Louisiana College. Ten minutes to play in the third. 17-13 your score. The Pirates with a four-point lead. Southwestern defense closed out the first half pretty strongly. They're looking to continue that momentum. Palmero 
Takes the shotgun snap and then will hand it off to Milburn who is brought down from behind. A nice tackle made by Gage Bernard as it, the play continues. He was not brought down and then cleaning up the play was William Whitehurst the fifth. That's Talk about Kevin a broadcaster Wilbur. expecting the, the game he just to, to the play down. to be down, brought down. Well you have to play to the whistle. Down. Coaches tell you all the that time play to the whistle. And he rolled over Gage Bernard and never was down and was able to pick up a couple more yards. That knee touching the turf is quite the interesting rule that you have to keep an eye on as a broadcaster. It looked like it was going to be an obvious down. Gage Bernard won't get credit for the tackle, but he does get a solid hit on Milburn before he picks up the first down for Louisiana College. First and 10 from their own 42-yard line. Wildcats with a fresh set of downs and a handoff to Milburn who stutters around his right end and spins into a couple Pirates that were able to meet him for only a yard gain on the play. Yeah, not a Our whole lot Milburn there the for yeah. Milburn. Plugging up the middle for the Pirates, number 42, Jay Hanna. Really middle one, edge. Gain on the play. <laughs> Second down for the Wildcats. Clock moving at 8.46 left to play in the third. Second and nine. Wildcats on their own 43-yard line. They want to get new play from the sideline with 12 seconds on the play clock. Palmero in the shotgun. Option. And he'll tuck it up the middle, and he is limited on his gain across the 45. Major George there to make sure That's there was a minimal gain keeper. from Palmero. And making the initial wrap-up was Jason Lund. Big 94 there to keep that to a limited gain and brings up third and five. And another big important third down here for the Pirates if they want to get off the field. They've had trouble in some drives getting off the field on third down. We'll see what they can do here defensively. The Wildcats taking a little bit of time to get the play in. Want to be sure. Play clock under seven. Palmero. Has Briscoe to his right. Two receivers on the right side, third and five. Palmero will drop back for a pass. Scans to the right side, fires to his right side. It is completed by Leon. He and dropped he it. dropped it. It did not complete the play. It looked like he was kind of celebrating from my angle. Yes, and the line judge says Leon. incomplete. And we have fourth down for the Wildcats. The home crowd not real happy with that, but he had basically made the catch, but he didn't complete, as you say, complete the catch the catch as he rolled over he lost control of the football and uh, ruled incomplete bringing up a fourth down forcing a punting situation for the Wildcats you're a Cowboys fan I hate to bring it up I know but was Dez it a catch it. Yeah, okay I just wanted to confirm Dez did catch you <laughs> <laughs> Austin Castilleja will wait behind the 20-yard line here on fourth down as Martinson will punt this one away. He's waiting and takes a bounce of a snap and still gets it off from the 35. He had to rush this one as it angles out around the 35-yard line. All things considered, not bad. Could have no, gone a lot worse. It went off the side of his foot as a result of the bad snap. You know, yeah, it affects your motion, and you're, you practice your muscle memory over and over. You get the good snap. You practice your kick, and that's what you expect in the game. And when it doesn't occur – it affects your muscle memory, and it can cause the kick to be a less significant game. They'll mark the ball first and ten. Then you would the prefer. Pirates, they angled it out line. at the Pirates' 38-yard line. 7:30 left to play here in the third quarter. 17 to 13, a four-point lead for Southwestern. Anthony Stevens lined up wide right in the slot on the right side. Mason Biggers, Ethan Powell is. On the left side, two men in the backfield with Landry Gilpin. Castilla to his right. And it'll be a Gilpin keeper as he takes it right back up the middle, gets to the 40, and picks up about two yards on first down. It was a great effort, but again, Michael or Micah Latin there Julius Johnson, to the make a play. There on the stop. Looks like he was joined by number one, Michael Latin as well. On a two yard game, a second and eight. Pirates taking their time in the huddle here. Second and eight, 22 seconds on the play clock as they break the huddle. Gilpin is Castilleja to his left. Lined up on the left side. It's Ethan Powell on a play action. Gilpin under pressure. He's just going to throw this one away. But Mason Biggers is there what to make catch. the catch. I thought he was just lobbing that up for nobody. Yeah, it's and it's incomplete. Bounds. Oh, Coming man, he must have just had his foot on the sideline. The officials had a better angle at it, but it looked like he had an NFL catch from our angle. That was a great effort at the very least by Mason Biggers to make it a play where the referee has to make a judgment call. 
and Landry Gilpin, I thought he was just going to take the down, but he almost picked up the first down for the Pirates. Here we go, Wildcat fans. Where you at? 6.44 left to play in the third quarter as the clock stopped on the incompletion. Third and eight, Pirates from their own 40. Gilpin has Dawson Gonzalez to his left and Casilla to his right play action. Gilpin under pressure, evades one tackle and completing the pass to Dawson Gonzalez. He lowers his shoulder at the 45. He's going to be short of the first down. Good effort, the, especially by the Number Wildcat defense the to come up and make sure that Gonzalez didn't get the line to game because he had a little bit of green Ernest in front Simon. of him. But Ernest Simon made sure bring up fourth that down. he could the not convert. Situation. Going to be fourth and about three. I, I'd watch a potential punt fake Cannon here. Leon. Clock moving, 6-10 left to play oh, in the Wildcats. third. Cannon Leon back deep to receive this Will Herbst punt. Herbst with that rugby style, two steps off his left foot and sends it to Leon. He drops the ball. It's muffed, and a pirate comes on top of it. That's number and 11. And it looks like Southwestern will come up with it on the bottom Peyton of the pile. Ludeman. There's some confusion here. The official's waiting for an official call. Might have gotten out of Ludeman's hand, but nope. It's held by Ludeman, and the Pirates will have it in the red zone. Great effort by Ludeman. The punt was muffed. It bounced off the returner's shoulder. That's number yeah, six. Fumble return punt. Kanan Leon fumble. and Ludeman, Johnny on the spot, jumped quickly on the loose ball and would not let go. Well, he had the, the kung field. fu grip on that football. Ken Leon injured. Hopefully he's okay. We'll take a break here. Pirates lead at 17-13. 5.54 left to play in the third quarter. Southwestern will have the ball on the Wildcats 18 with the first and 10 when we come back. Kane and Leon coming off the field. Going to be hand, everybody. Hopefully we'll see him back out there quickly. Kane and Leon able to make his way to the sidelines. Hopefully he's okay. 554 left to play in the third quarter. Southwestern leading 17 to 13. And the Pirates come back out on the field with new life breathed into this drive, uh, if you will, as the muff bolster to the momentum they already had a little of. And they're in the red Inside zone the here. 20. They just need to convert. Yeah, Wildcat fans, close up. Brandon Jennings in the backfield with Gilpin. Trips to the right, single receiver to the left is Ethan Powell. In motion is Mason Biggers. Play action here for Gilpin. He's under pressure as he throws it to the end zone. Nathan Powell with the touchdown for the Pirates. That's Wide Pirates. open, deep slant pass to Powell. He had the inside and great pass by Gilpin for the touchdown. An 18-yard touchdown pass on the first play following the muffed punt gives the Pirates a 23-13 lead before the point after. It's an important point after here. It'll push it to an 11-point lead, which is either way it's a two-possession game, but a two-possession game with a two-point conversion is, is even more difficult to convert if you're the Wildcats. Herbs with the point after, gets the hold from Coleman Kerr, and the kick is through the uprights and good, and makes its way onto the street into a neighborhood just neighboring Wildcat Stadium here. 5.49 left to play in the third quarter. Southwestern with a 24-13 lead over Louisiana College. I'm Carl Schoening along with Chuck Crazy, Mickey Holden on the camera. Hope you guys have been enjoying this broadcast on SHN Sports of Southwestern Pirate Football. And, you know, Chuck, I'm real, I would like to say that I think quarter, it's really Western, good on the American Southwest Conference to reschedule these games because we're having a blast today. Definitely, and it was unfortunate Louisiana that College. COVID caused 13. the fall season, the, t the typical the season that the, the teams would uh, journey you, through. They canceled it and rescheduled, so it would have been even worse on this program and these kids if they were unable to reschedule these games. It would have been the – one weekend of playoffs this weekend. Instead, we go back to what would have been the second game, the last home game of the regular season for the Wildcats and the last regular season game as an NCAA team before they move to the NAIA next year. 5.49 left to play in the third quarter. Southwestern with the 24-13 lead. They've scored 24 unanswered. 
It's been all Pirates since the first quarter. Will Herps will send this one away from the 35. A booming end over in kick. That'll be taken by Charles at the six yard line. He takes it down the numbers on the right side. Gets across the 20, the 25, 30, and he stumbles his way to the 35 yard line. Nice return there as Peyton Ludman had the tackle. That was a good That's return, but Ludeman down making Freshman another play on the second consecutive, you know, couple of plays between them, obviously, but two kickoffs run out to almost the back to back. Both plays by Peyton Ludeman. Here we go, Wildcat fans. Let them hear you out there. 5.43 left to play in the third quarter in Sal Palmero and the Wildcat offense are going to have to open up their playbook. They threw 39 passes last week as they fell down 20-3 to going into the fourth quarter against Bellhaven. It'll be a handoff to Briscoe, who finds some space on the left side, gets across the 45 to midfield, and is brought down from behind in Pirate territory at the 43-yard line. Keeping that from Number going 16, any further Kevin for Briscoe the Pirates was Jay Hanna. Good hard run by Briscoe, right off left tackle. He kept the legs churning, broke tackles along the way, had a nice game. First down for the Wildcats as they try to answer. Wildcats get it to the Pirates, 43, and a new set of downs. Palmero, play action, pass out to the right side. It is completed, and it's at the 45-yard line where he's seven. pushed out of bounds Micah by Dunn. Easton Feller as Micah Dunn comes up with a first down. Oh, just shy of the first yeah, down, a yard about short. yard gain. Nice, nice execution by the Wildcats. It'll be second yeah, and that's one. That's good for nine yards. Brings Clock up moving here. 5 07 left to play in the third quarter. Palmero's doing it with his arm at the moment after getting the big lift from Briscoe on the explosive play prior. Palmero in the shotgun. He sends Micah Dunn in motion, and Dunn gets the give on the sweep, and he goes around right end and. Cuts his way across the 30 for the first Number down at Dunn. the 25 yard line. That was a good a effort cat. by the Wildcat offensive line, especially on the right side. They had a nice edge that they set, and he was able to get outside and pick up the first down and a nice gain on top of the first down yardage. 440 left to play in the third quarter. First and 10 for Palmero and the Wildcats. They're at the Pirates 25 yard line. Two receivers to the left, a single receiver to the right and a tight end on the right side. A blitz being shown by the Pirates. A hit as he throws, it's intercepted. Taking it the other way is Easton Feller. Feller has nobody in front of him as he crosses the 40, the 30. He has a one man to beat at the 10 and he is brought down from behind inside the five. Palmero throws his first interception of the day and almost run back for a touchdown. Easton Feller comes up with a big return for about 60 yards, I would say. Feller was sitting on that route Palmero did not see him, flipped it out there, and he just took it down the right sideline. If it weren't for the angles taken by the offensive players for the Wildcats, that would have been a score. Nice return. Saving Sets up the Pirates the in the score. red zone. First and goal from oh, the five. I do want to give a lot of shout-out to the effort from Micah field, Dunn, who chased him down from Pirates. behind. On the five-yard line. Yeah, he had a good angle on him, and it's what it's going to take when you get a guy like Feller out there defense. running down Here the sideline. 4-14 left to play in the third quarter, and Southwestern looking to add on to their 24-13 lead. Landry Gilpin in the shotgun. Dawson Gonzalez to his right. Austin Cassier lined up to his left, and a flag comes in here as the play clock hits zero. I think that'll be a delay of game as the Pirates had first and goal from the five. Offense. And that backs him up to the ten. Sometimes that happens when you spend a little bit too much time celebrating a big play on defense. You delay your offense getting out there and getting a play called. Additionally, the offensive coaches likely didn't have a play dialed up at that particular moment. They didn't expect a 60-yard interception <laughs> that's, return. That's fair. So it, it, it delays your offense. You get out there, and you end up with a delay of game penalty. But it's still first and goal. 4-14 left to play in the third. Gilpin takes the snap. It's going to be a design quarterback run. Actually, he tries to sidearm that to Austin Costier. Yeah, Ball's incomplete. incomplete. We'll bring up second I down think that Pirates. was kind of a second option that he knew he had available to him with Costier kind of staying in the flats, and he just sent it to the turf, I think. I think he, he kind of lost the grip on the football a little bit, and that's what caused it to, to be errant in the delivery because generally he'll put that a little closer 
to the receiver and give them an opportunity. That ball can get slippery on a hot, muggy day like today, and even with a towel that the quarterback typically will carry, that can get soaking wet as well. Play clock is down to five seconds here for the Pirates. 4-11 is where the clock stopped following the incompletion. Two seconds here as he takes the snap. Gilpin on the play action. Finds Costier coming off of the sweep action. Gets into the end zone for a touchdown. touchdown. Great design play. The defense had no clue. Costier, they thought it was going to be a jet sweep, but that they wouldn't deliver that as a pass. They did. He used his speed to get to the corner and extend the Pirate lead. The 10-yard touchdown pass from Landry Gilpin to Austin Castilleja extends the Pirates' lead 30-13 to before the point after attempt. Will Herb's ready to line this one up. It's been all Pirates since the first quarter. The kick is through the uprights and good. And, the extra and is good. Southwestern now leads it 31-13, 4.05 left to play in, in the third, third quarter. quarter. Still plenty of football left to play, so you don't want to rest, rest on your laurels too much at this point in the game. You want to continue to push and play great defense like they have since the first quarter and additionally convert offensively when you have the opportunities. Well, I'd like to point out that last week against Bellhaven, the – Wildcats were able to outscore them 21 to 13 and if it weren't for the 13 points put up by Bellhaven the Wildcats could have won that game in the fourth quarter so right you know obviously you talk about taking down uh, two field goals and a touchdown there but uh, it's definitely a situation where you still have to give proper respect to this Wildcats too many team. athletes on that offense for the Wildcats to right, just Wildcat expect fans, them to lay down here at home Will Herbs will kick this one away from the 35 following the 10-yard touchdown completion from Landry Gilpin to Austin Costieja. 4.05 left to play in the third. Charles and Briscoe are back deep to receive this kickoff. A straight-on take from Herbs. He sends it end over end, and Charles will take it at around the 7-yard line. Shifts to the numbers, makes a man miss at the 20, and is stopped short of the 25-yard line. He's pushed back and finally is down at about the 21-yard line. Whole host of Pirates return. in on that. A galley of Pirates. Yeah, it looks like he makes it out to the 20-yard line. Flags come in after the play yeah, as it looks like there's some extracurricular activity. Some talking going on. You know, the Wildcats don't like being down 31-13 at home on senior day. You know, it's... You've got to be careful, though, because even your mouth can get a penalty flag thrown. It doesn't have to be hands laid on another player. It can just be what you say. Let's see what the result of the flag is. After the play, a sportsmanlike conduct, return team number 22. Field to be enforced half the distance to the goal. First down, Louisiana College. And that'll just move them a little closer to the goal line. It'll still be first and 10. They call that against... Dalen Charles, who was the returner. Oh, I guess they're going to make it uh, first and 20. Oh, wow. It was a dead ball foul, so uh, it happened after the play, yeah, I guess. That's what I thought. No, now the chain gang is starting to be okay. waved out. I was a little I, confused I, there. Yeah, <laughs> I was too, but I was going to accept it because it benefited the Pirates. <laughs> 3.56 left to play in the third quarter, and it's back to James Powell Jr. in the shotgun. From the right hash mark. Gives uh, oh no. to Briscoe, and Briscoe gets across the 20, stays on his feet after taking a hit at the 25, down the right sideline to the 30, picks up the first down, and gives a little momentum here to the Wildcats. Briscoe not one to shake and bake, obviously, yes, as he 16, plows Kevin straight Briscoe ahead for a nice game, the hits the hole That's hard, and picks up a good 12 yards down. beyond that. Clock moving here, 340 left to play in the third quarter. Powell in the shotgun. We'll hand it off, and Briscoe will take it around left in this time, and he is wrapped up and brought down after a gain of about five on first down as he crosses the 35 to the 36-yard line. Briscoe, once again. Wildcats trying to That's a five -yard get a little bit of a spark here the with their Wildcat quarterback in the game and it's paying off at this point in the drive. Powell with another give to Briscoe. Briscoe to work her horse here as he goes around right in and picks up the first That's down for the Wildcats. Down, number 16 again. Williams and, and Issa there on the stop. 
It is going to be a first down for the Wildcats, though. Briscoe, obviously tired, will come off of the field and a rest well earned as he got them out from inside the 10 all the way to the Wildcats' 44-yard line. First yeah. and 10. Powell on the shotgun. Two men in the backfield with him. He'll give it to Milburn. Milburn stretching it to the right side across the 45, and then Ludeman grabs him as he tried to uh, jump over Mark him. And Milburn. He's brought down at the, about the 46. Ludeman having a heck of a, a second half here. For second and a seven for he's the got a fumble Cats. recovery and a couple of special teams tackles as well as, as defensive play there. Just in the second half, just in the third period. 2.20 left to play in the third as the clock's moving here. Powell on second and seven from the right hash mark will fake the handoff and take it himself behind the B gap and That's gets the Powell first down as James Powell Jr. got past the trenches and gets it in the Pirates' territory. Nice read by Powell. He provided a spark on a drive in the first half coming in while the Wildcats run the Wildcat, and he's providing that spark here in the third period as well. He's listed as the backup quarterback, and we see that a lot here in the American Southwest where the second quarterback just brings a different element to throw off the defense. A fumble here. Ludeman comes up with it again on the give. It comes out of the hands of Milburn, and it's a turnover on the Wildcats. Pirates will take over to around their own 41-yard on line. Ludeman is having a great That's quarter a here in the third. Here. That's his second fumble recovery. He's had a couple of tackles as well. A minute 45 is where the clock stops on the turnover, and Southwestern gets it back on their own 41-yard line, trying to add on to their 31-13 lead. I didn't get to see who separated the ball from the running back, but it went straight to Ludeman. I can guarantee Let's you that'll be in the highlights because I cut up the highlights. <laughs> All right. I'll know then. We got Alex. There's plenty of highlights to cut up for this ball game for sure. Gilpin will come back out in the shotgun, first and 10 from zone 41 yard on. Ethan Powell lined up wide left. Castilleja will go in motion for the option play. He'll follow Dawson Gonzalez, who lays out a nice block and just stops short of the 45, a gain of about three yards for Austin Castilleja. Good technique by Gonzalez on that block. He cut the defender down low and allowed Castilleja to well, pick Roderick up a Lyle couple of yards the on the play. On the for the Wildcats. Along with Montel Cormier, number 53. Minute 20 left to play in the Second third down. quarter. It's been a long Three third Wildcats quarter, mostly ends. because the Wildcats kind of started off by passing, and then they brought in James Powell Jr., and they kind of were still able to get out of bounds a couple times or stop the clock in somewhere or another to move the chains here. With a minute left to play in the third, Gilpin in the shotgun on second and seven from his own 44. Option play here with Castilleja. Gilpin tries to cut it back and gets away from a couple defenders. Gets to the 45, only picks up one yard on second down. That's a great effort because he turned a loss of about six into a gain of about one. Number 17, Ernest Simon. We'll call That's Ernest Simon with the, the tackle and also leaving the game because he lost his helmet. Michael Latin comes go, out. That's advantageous for the Pirates here on third down. Latin definitely having a really good game for the Wildcats. Missing him on third down is not a not. optimal uh, play here. With 33 seconds left to play in the third quarter, the play clock at 23, the Pirates break the huddle. They're going to burn as much clock as they can here in the third, most of the period with the play clock. He opened in the shotgun. Castilla to his right and Dawson Gonzalez to his left. Third and five from their own 46-yard line. Pirates trying to pick up the first down. Gilpin trying to evade a defender, and then he just throws this one away. I think he was looking for Ethan Powell. They no were flag. tied up, yes, and no complete. flag was thrown, though. As Ethan Powell yes, was on the turf, Whitaker. I didn't see what happened. Like you said, it looked like in they were the tied up. And five and seconds left to play down. in the third quarter. Fourth down here for the Pirates, and Powell was looking for the flag, but the referees, they didn't even give him a second look. Micah Dunn will go back to receive this punt. Previously perceiving, receiving punts was Canyon Leon, and hopefully he's okay as he left after the last time that he was out there to receive a punt. Will Herps will kick this one away from around the Pirate 32-yard line. He has that rugby-style kick that makes it around the 34. He sends this one spiraling deep, and this one will angle out great inside the punt. five. What a great punt from Will Herps. Those are the kind of punts that in, 
earn you that is the end conference of the honors. That point. And as a rally. punter. And he had never punted before is the, the craziest thing. Line. It actually bounced the the for the Wildcats the, Wildcats the other direction than I quarter. thought it did, and it'll be down at the eight as it angled out of bounds after the bounce at around the five-yard line. We start the fourth quarter with the Pirates leading 31-13. to 13. 13, And it's 31 unanswered points Wildcats by the Pirates here, and the that's certainly quarter. what you like to see if you're a Pirates fan. Definitely. We've seen improvement throughout the season, of course, the Mary Harden-Baylor game, it's really hard to judge the outcomes because most of the spread in that game were self-inflicted wounds for the Pirates, and they've shorn those up in coming into today's game and have really exploded on both sides of the ball and even in special teams. All three phases of the game, they've excelled today. The Pirates... We'll come back out defensively to start the fourth quarter. But, yeah, you mentioned all three phases of the ball. The end of the third quarter, perhaps the best special teams play we've seen all game. And that's with much respect to the kicker for the Wildcats, Madison, who has had a really solid game with a lot of touchbacks and some solid punts after some pressure from maybe some not-so-optimal snaps. We'll leave it at that. And, right. But Will Herbst definitely having the better game as a kicker for the Southwestern Pirates. It'll be James Powell Jr. who's in the shotgun here. His feet on the two-yard line as he'll take a direct snap and decide to just make it a quarterback run. He gets and to the 10-yard line, line and picks up to the a couple yards on first down. About three, maybe. Wildcats taking a little bit of time. And it's not their passing offensive quarterback out here. It's more their running quarterback and... Powell, so Powell will now run the option and then it will give it to Briscoe. A flag comes in as Briscoe is brought down. The defensive play made by Patrick Nicholas, and let's see what the flag's about. 18, Great tackle White. by Nicholas there flag on the edge, one-on-one -on -one in the open. Brought the big Briscoe down to the ground. We'll see what the penalty flag is. Chuck, would you like any sunscreen? Holding. Offense, number 88. Tells me before it's half the distance to go. Remain second down. Holding goes against Louisiana College. And, yes, Chuck did want some sunscreen. And, oh, the neck. That's a good idea. Let me get that back. As we're sitting in the stands. We're men of the people here as second Mickey down. Holden also Wildcats. out in the stands. Where you at, Wildcat fans? Let them hear you. Before we continue this play, I would like to say this has been the most hospitable place that we have been in a long time. We appreciate the people of Pineville, Texas, for letting us out here. It's second and 11, and a give here to Briscoe. He tries to find some space around the right side. He does fight for a couple yards back to the 10, and that picks up some of those penalty yards lost on that half the distance to Devin the goal hold. Boy, 16, he was grinding the there. The legs never stopped churning. It now took to several pirates to stop his down, momentum. Wildcats. Clock keeps moving here. 13.56 left to play in the fourth quarter. Briscoe's a bit of a load. He's an explosive load, too. He's had a few big plays from that running back position. It's Powell in the shotgun. He'll drop back for a pass. Goes through his progressions, and then he is sacked. Right on the goal line. It'll be fourth down and long. They need now to get to the 17-yard yard line. And it looks like Grant Mitchell making the big tackle. Great effort by the defensive tackle, the big fella, getting in there and cleaning it up. And look at this. For the first time this afternoon, Austin Castilleja will be returning a punt from the Pirates side of the or the Wildcats side of the field. Plus, the Wildcats have to punt with the punters back to the back of the goal. It's a tough short snap an opportunity for a block here for the pirates madison will just barely get this off and he angles it nicely that'll take a bounce at around the 35 yard line be angled out at around the 40 so costia has no chance to return yeah, it and we're, we're giving him some credit he's having a really solid game, game as a kicker and he, he wanted to avoid giving the opportunity of for costia to make a play there costia has demonstrated that he can make plays in multiple as aspects from multiple positions, and you don't want to give another spark to the Pirates if you're the Wildcats by just kicking the ball directly to Austin Costilla. 
Pirates will and start Wildcats at the Wildcats 40 yard Let's line. Wildcat fans, close up! Great field position for the Pirates to open this drive. Their best field position of the afternoon. Well, actually, there have been some turnovers that have made it a little bit easier for the Pirates. Best off of a punt. First and 10. Gilpin has a little bit of misconfusion misconfu here as he is tackled for a loss back near midfield. And, and it looks like sack in the they weren't quite sure which direction the play was going to run. And the Pirates will lose yards all the way back to the Wildcat 48. Yeah, Gilpin Bill missed Robertson the handoff. And he looked up and Michael Latin was standing right there. And he basically just said, I'm going to try to minimize Along the loss Michael here. Latin, number one. It was a loss of eight. Brings up second and 18. Slim trying to get the Pirates fans into it with chance of here we go Pirates. He's at every game he can make. I have never been to a Southwestern game that I did not see Slim fan in. He even found a loophole by watching outside of Burkle back week he did. one. 1204 left to play here, second and 18, and it's a handoff to Jennings, and Jennings is brought down from behind after getting back to the line of scrimmage. Big number 97 of the defense there for no the Wildcats the to Marco Collins just brought him down from behind you can't carry that kind of weight very far third and 18 pirates have gone backwards in this drive gilpin jogs back out on the field with a new play and let's see if coach joe austin has an 18 yard play up his sleeve there's a few of them in the playbook we'll see if they can execute Pirates lead at 31-13 here on third and 18, and it's a handoff to Dawson Gonzalez. Going to play the conservative route, which is yep. with this lead, you, you know, the last thing you want to do is give the Wildcats some momentum here with about Big 11 stop minutes by the remaining. Brings up fourth down. Well, the way Will Herps has been punting, and you know that you probably don't want to put that 18-yard play on film in a 31-13 game. Uh, you know, you save that for another day when you maybe need it, and Will Herps will probably pin him deep here as uh, he's been doing all afternoon. He's got a punt into the wind. It's coming a little bit across, but it's a little into his face as well. We'll see if he gets a good punt off here. He hasn't had a bad one today. I hope I don't jinx him. Micah Dunn waiting around the 10-yard line for this Will Herps punt. Herp sends it away from the 40, and this one wobbles out of bounds at around the 35-yard line. Hold yeah. of it. The wind really did shift that kind of trajectory we'll as it was going to be Wildcats. down that sideline, and you did jinx him, by the way, Chuck. Yeah, it pushed it down and, and out on the southwestern sideline. It was a pretty strong win. He kicked it right into the head of that win. Yeah, we've been talking about the wind the all day. The Hasn't been too much of an issue. However, it does play yeah. into that 33-yard field really goal. It's really been that, a problem in kicking only. Yeah, yeah that 33-yard field goal that Will Herps knocked down to make it 17-13 was pretty pure right into the wind. So mm -hmm. we'll go ahead and forgive a little bit of uh, – uh, it was a good enough yeah. punt. It, it, it got the job done as Louisiana College will take over at their own 35-yard line. Sal Palmero back in at quarterback. Trips left, single receiver to the right. Zion Williams goes in motion, and he fakes the handoff to him, and now he throws it deep down the right sideline. Jules Williams had to have that one knocked away from him by Micah Dunn, who became kind of a defensive back on the play. I was just going to say that Dunn had to become a defender. The pass did not come exactly like Palmero would like to deliver it out of his hand. There was a little bit of a wobble like it maybe slipped, and – it made it where Williams had an opportunity to make an interception. So good play by the receiver. You can feel the wind shifting into our face if you're sitting here in the stands with us. And uh, that might have also played into a little bit of the Williams uh, reading of the air out pass. Here's a pass completed to White who makes the catch across the middle and then gets some yards after the yes, catch in midfield White, into 18. the Pirates field. Territory. They took a page out of the Pirates offensive on. playbook by running all the receivers downfield and leaving the middle open and bringing the receiver across on a drag pattern for a first down completion. Trips left, single receiver to the right, first and 10 at the Pirates 49 yard line. Palmero lets it fly and he overthrows White and that's incomplete with 9.59 left to play in the fourth pass, quarter. I think Palmero saw his wide open and his eyes got a little big and he overthrew that pass. Put a little bit too much mustard on it. Palermo looking to the sidelines for a new play here as the clock stopped at 9.59 for second and 10 for Louisiana College from the Pirates 49 yard line. Play clock down to 18 seconds left. 
Two receivers split on both sides. Palermo will drop back. And overthrows his intended receiver. Looked like that was going to go to Micah Dunn, but Dunn about 10 yards shy of where the football ended. A pass goes incomplete to bring up third down for the Wildcats. I guess he wanted Let it to go a little Wildcats deeper fans. on the routes. You got to be on the same page as a receiver and a quarterback, and it's difficult because oftentimes it depends on what read you make of the defense. Palermo will get some new instructions from the sideline, third and 10. 9.53 left in this fourth quarter. Big play here for the Pirates to shut it down. Palermo will drop back. Scans to his left, and he throws to the left side. It is caught, and back in the game, making the catch there is Kanan Leon. And you good, it's happy, always good to see somebody come back Number in, six, but Kanan in this particular Leon. case, Kanan Leon <laughs> gets the explosive Wildcat. play for first, first down for the Wildcats. Well-executed Wildcat. play, Palermo to Leon. <laughs> Leon was open. He got enough to get the line to game before the pass was even delivered, and it was a great delivery right on target. 31-13 Pirates lead that the Wildcats are trying to cut into as they have a new set of downs at the Pirates' 34-yard line. Palermo finds Leon again in the middle of the field. He makes one-man mission, then he's brought down by Bernard That's Century complete. inside the 30. Palermo and Leon That's playing a little Leon pitch and catch. Good. Pirates need to figure that one out. Good for seven yards. Might want to put a man on Leon. Second and three. Second and three, Leon. Back in the game has come up with two big catches to keep this drive going for the Wildcats. 9.05 left in the third. It'll be a pass here from Palermo. Leon again, and then he gets hit hard, laying him out That's on the play. Six, was, he was able to hang on to Kadari it. Issa. Kadari Issa lays him out, though, but it's a first down inside the 20. The red zone is now where the Wildcats stand. It's Palermo to Leon for the last three plays. And the Pirates haven't had an answer so far. I believe the first catch was when the line of scrimmage was at the 49-yard line in Pirates territory. They're down to the Pirates 18, first and 10. Palermo will drop back for a pass. Scans to the left and has this one tipped at the line of scrimmage. Looked like and that, that was Ben Brockman tipped. getting his big paw up Wildcats. in the air to tip it and knock it down. I haven't seen Ben Brockman out there, but William Whitehurst He's the fifth. Isn't Brockman number five? Brockman is number three. I was I, I made the mistake earlier because I was looking My at the... My roster says he's five, but they could have changed it. Mine was the original roster, so I could be wrong. I got my roster from Louisiana College SID, but I thought it was Ben Brockman too. It so is Ben Brockman. I'm pretty sure it's Ben Brockman there. So I apologize for to Ben Brockman as I was given an incorrect roster perhaps here. It'll be a pass from Palermo, and he is sacked. And he, that was a whole host of Pirates. Big Garrett Wilson leading the way, or Mitchell, I mean, Grant Mitchell. Loss on the play is going to push it all the way back to the 27-yard the the line. Third down for the Wildcats. They need to get down to the nine-yard line. Yep, Ben Brockman's number five, by the way. Ben Brockman's having a great game there at the middle linebacker position. I will have to figure out how that happened. It, it, it's We were probably looking at – you, I think you said Louisiana College's roster, and they just had it incorrect. It's the only explanation. Palermo will complete a pass to White, and White is brought down from behind by Ben Brockman this time. But he yes, converted the first down, the though. They do give him the, the first down, and the that'll move the chains. It'll be first and goal at around the seven-yard line for the Wildcats. And that'll make Good execution by the Wildcats. The Wildcats. They third and 18. And it, a little, little throwback to the first quarter when the Pirates couldn't stop the the Wildcats on third and long, and they were able to keep two of their two touchdown drives alive with a couple of different third down and long conversions, and they did it again here. 7.30 left to play in the fourth quarter and looking to score for the first time since the first quarter are the Wildcats. Palermo will roll out to the left. He's hit as he throws and he tries to get into the end zone. Leon couldn't quite adjust to that one as it was thrown to the wide right of him and that stops the clock at 7.20 left to play in the fourth. The end zone, That'll happen to you when you're hit as you deliver the pass. It affects the, the delivery and the accuracy and that was just way off. And we've seen Palermo make that throw, so he to was affected Leon too. by the pressure. Right, a couple of times in this drive, actually. A few times. 
Palermo will bark out new orders with 10 seconds left on the play clock. Milburn lines up to his left. Palermo throws to his left. It's incomplete as that one hit the turf. He delivered it well yeah, enough. It just uh, the receiver unable to hang on to it there near the goal line. That's number 80. Yeah, his first target of the game, Jalen Watkins. Third goal for the Wildcats. Third and goal from the eight now for Louisiana College. Obviously two-down territory here for the Wildcats as they want touchdowns, not yeah, field you, goals. Yeah, you can't come up with anything more, less than six points on the next two plays if you're a Wildcat. Palermo in the shotgun. Will drop back, scans to his left, lobs it to the end zone, and it's incomplete. No flag on Good the play. Defense. Ludeman with nice defense on the intended target. Micah Dunn the continues zone, his great effort in the second half defensively for the Pirates. Peyton Ludeman making a bid to be the defensive player for today. Certainly imagine that he would be in the conversation, and the clock stops at 7-11 left to play in the fourth. It's fourth and goal from the eight. And like we were saying, they have to come away with six points in this position. They're okay with the turnover on downs and not going to take the points. And the Pirates will take a timeout to talk this over. Timeout, Southwestern. First try. Seven minutes and 11 seconds remaining in this ball game. There's still plenty of time for the Wildcats to make a run, but they're going to need some breaks for them to really make a, a run at, at this or the Pirates to just lay down and let Wildcats them win. Next week will and that's not going to happen. Face so. Mary Harden Baylor. No, but it will be an interesting final 7-11 if the Wildcats can get into the end zone and make it 31-20. Right yes, and, sir. You know, then they would have to have a couple really good stops on defense quick. Or, but a, or a touchdown. A, a, when they get a stop, if they get a touchdown, they get an onside, they can, they can try to convert. Coach Austin mentioned on SU Football Weekly, you can hear at 6 o'clock on Wednesdays here on SHN Sports, that you know going into what would have been the first time these two teams met on the first game of the season for Louisiana College, they didn't have much data on them, but they have so much data after two games that they've even seen what an onside kick might look like. So always good to have more film than less. Definitely. Pal Palermo will be in the shotgun. He is Briscoe, like three receivers lined up on the left side. Now they shift over to the right, and that'll change up the Pirates' defenses there in man, trying to adjust to that shift. Play clock down to 15 seconds. Palermo will take the snap on fourth and eight, rolling out to the right, and he'll lob it to the left side. It is caught coming into the end zone. A touchdown a wild for the Wildcats. And Jacob Ganate, the tight end, puts the first six on the board in the second half for Louisiana College. And the Pirates did everything they could to prevent that touchdown on that play, but it was just a good pass and a receiver with a step on the defender and the pass in the perfect spot. He's able to bring it in, take it across the goal line for the score. Now the point oh, after attempt. Very important point after attempt here if you're a Wildcat fan. Martinson almost has this one blocked, gets it off just in yeah, time. So and good. That makes the new score 31 to 20. Southwestern with 11 point lead over Louisiana College. 704 left in the fourth quarter. If I'm 31. the Pirates, I'm your looking Louisiana for an College onside Wildcats now. 20. As it's very possible that Louisiana College would know that a later onside might be defended a little better. They might catch the Pirates off, a little off guard here if they could try to to do an onside here. That If I'm coaching the Wildcats, I attempt an onside here. I don't see what you have to lose because you have to get a stop. You might as well try and get the ball back as soon as you can. And You have to get a stop, and you have to get a touchdown, a two-point conversion, and a, at least a field goal to tie. A couple miracles needed, it sounds Definitely. like, here for the final 7-0-4 which is why you build a 31 to 13 lead right. if you're the Pirates. You don't pull your, your foot off the gas, you don't apply it to the brake, it's, it's all gas, no brakes for the Pirates here. Martinson will place the ball on the tee and he's definitely surveying for an onside kick. He's looking at the front line, the hands crew must be out there for Southwestern. Yeah, the, he may have been instructed that if the hands crew comes out to just kick it deep, and we'll see. Elijah Norris back deep to receive should he choose to go far back. And it will go back to Norris. Norris will just kind of let this one sail into the end zone for a touchback, and that is the 
That was close, close to touch. being out of bounds, but no yeah. flag thrown. They call it Ooh. a touchback. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, will. They okay. Was, the end zone. That, that looked like it was close there for a moment. The official just wanted to confirm that it wasn't out at the two, as he saw from a different angle. The white hat confirms the touchback, and 7.04 left to play in the fourth. No well, onside kick Tampa this time. Yeah, the side judge has a similar angle that we that have, and it looked line. like it bounced right over the pylon. Remaining. He had a look at the white hat. The white hat, who was right along parallel there. with the goal line, just looked down the line, and he saw that it did cross into the end zone first. Andrew Gilpin and the Pirates offense coming out with a 31-20 to 20 lead. 7.04 left to play in the fourth quarter. Gilpin from his own 25 will give to Castilla. Castilla cuts back up the middle and maybe gets a couple yards before he is JJ. tackled on the play by Julius Johnson. Johnson was waiting there head. in the hole for him. Castilla tried to Second dance out eight. of his way, but that hole wasn't big enough. Who's got Wildcat spirit out there? Clock moving 6.45 left to play in the fourth. Pirates are content letting this play clock burn down as they break the huddle at 20 seconds on the play clock. They definitely should burn as many seconds on each play as they can, uh, but not to take yourself out of rhythm to do so. Castilla has enough time to adjust his gloves as he lines up to the right of Landry Gilpin. Six seconds on the play clock as he gets the snap and a handoff to Dawson Gonzalez who goes around right end, and I think he gets back to the line of scrimmage, which is the 27-yard line. Big stop. The Wildcats the have a little bit of momentum and here. Timeout on the field injury. The big fella's hurt. Yeah, Wilbert Robertson, who's been fun to watch there on the defensive side of the ball. Hopefully he's okay and we'll take a break. 6.15 left to play in the fourth. It's 31 to 20. We pause for the injury timeout as the Pirates lead it by 11. Comes off the field, big number 99, Will Robertson. Hope to see him back quickly. Will Robertson. Able to come off under his own Here we power. Go, Wildcat fans. Six fifteen left to play in the fourth, and it's third and seven for the Pirates as they trot back on the field after the injury timeout. They have the ball on their own twenty-eight yard line. Clock burning. It does start back up, and there's 35 seconds on the play clock for Southwest, and they're going to huddle again. I've never actually seen a center get ready to snap and then able to come off and. The Pirates have yet to use their first. I believe they did use one timeout so far in they this did. half. Yes, and so they have two left. If they elected to just kind of want to, at some point, let the play clock go all the way down, it's at 13 seconds right now as they line up again. 5:44 left to play in the fourth quarter. Gilpin in the shotgun. Zone read. He'll keep it, and he looks to pass, and now he tries to tuck it and run. He will not get around the right end. He gets back to the That's line of scrimmage, maybe, and that brings up fourth down. You know, played it a little conservative, tried to burn as much time as, as you could. Wanted to the first avoid turning the ball over on your side of the field. Game, but they still, successfully did that. The next step would be to convert a couple of first downs. That was not successful. So back on the defense Mike and the special team, the one, get a good punt. To come out and Wildcat prevent fans. the Wildcats from getting an easy quick touchdown. Micah Dunn back deep to receive this punt from Will Herps, who's been just phenomenal as a kicker this afternoon, really helping the Pirates on the special team side of the ball. 450 left to play as he takes the snap and he kicks this one a line drive that'll go to Dunn on a back pedal at the 30. He finds some space at the numbers, gets to the 35, and then he's lassoed out of bounds by Peyton Ludeman at around the 38-yard line. Number seven, Another Mike special Dunn. teams Lutheran tackle return. for Peyton Ludeman. Now it's between Ludeman and Will Erbst as far as the special Four teams player of the game. So Southwestern will head back on the defensive side of the ball. Louisiana College will get it at their own 38-yard line. First and 10, and Sal Palmero, the third, will come back out to be the quarterback. He's been splitting time with James Powell, Jr., so they go with the offensive passing arm. Plenty of time left for the Wildcats here. 441 left to play in the fourth. From their own 38-yard line, Palmero has receivers stacked on both sides. 
Scans to his left as he goes through his first progression and throws across the middle and it just goes off of the hands of Zion Williams incomplete. Wildcats lucky the Pirates didn't have yes, someone did there Zion for the Williams. tip drill because that would have been Number going two. the other way. No one Incomplete. anywhere Bring near the ball tip. once it was tipped. Pass a little bit too hard for the receiver to handle. Bounces off his fingertips. Clock stops at 4.36. We'll have to play in the fourth. And a 31-20 to 20 lead for Southwestern. The and only benefit of an incompletion if you're the Wildcats is that it does stop the clock. Two receivers on both sides here for Palmero, who will drop back. Steps up in the pocket and throws deep down the field. It's completed by Leon. Leon across the 10 in the end zone. Touchdown. That's the quick touchdown I was just saying. The Pirates can ill afford to give up. A 62-yard touchdown from Palmero to Leon. And Leon has to come six. off of the field as he got injured after the play. He's exhausted. He left the game earlier because of an injury. He's leaving it all out on the field here. Yeah, it's likely cramps. It is a very humid day. And I'm surprised we haven't seen more players cramp up. Kanan Leon definitely earns his break here. 4.27 left to play in the fourth quarter, and it's 31-26. Got to convert the two-point conversion here to make it where a field goal will tie. Play clock is down to five seconds here. Palmero in the shotgun, empty back set, and it hits zero, and no flag comes in here as Palmero will have to try and go into the end zone and on a no run. No conversion. Yep. And I think he was even looking for the flag, and no flag thrown on the delay of game, but no conversion either. And, and the Pirates keep no a five-point lead. 27 remaining, Southwestern 31. Your Louisiana College Wildcats. You're right, though. They, they had to have a lot go right to make it a little bit more interesting. There. But they do have the onside kick opportunity here with 427 and, left. And all it means is you, you're not going for a field goal anymore. You're going for another touchdown. And they showed that they can score it quickly, as they did in the last possession. But you have to first get the onside kick. And the Pirates kick return team are discussing it on the sidelines right now. All the possible scenarios, they're, they're covering those right now. Well, the Pirates scored 31 unanswered after falling behind 13 to nothing to the Wildcats in the first quarter. Since then, the Wildcats have scored 13 unanswered, and it'll be Martinson who will try and get an onside kick this time around. Elijah Norris back deep to receive, but I would imagine this is the time for the onside kick if you're the Wildcats. There's still plenty of time. You could rely on your defense here, but I'm likely kicking on onside here. You bring up a good point. There still is enough time to get a stop, and it looks like it will be Martinson sending it back to Norris. Norris will backpedal at the five, takes it at the three, and he looks for some space as he has to try and get past the coverage, and he slides just shy of the 15-yard line, and there is a lot of and green behind the Wildcat defense. Inside they come back the out. Line will be first the Pirates' ten. main goal well, Pirates. here is to keep this drive alive by Wildcats converting first defense. downs and burning as much defense. clock as possible. It's going to be an interesting stretch here with 4.23 remaining and the Pirates holding on to a five-point lead after building a 31-13 lead. Pirates come back out onto the field and they will start at their own 13-yard line. First and 10. 4.23 left to play in the fourth. Landry Gilpin in the shotgun. He has Austin Castilla to his left. Dawson Gonzalez to Wildcats his right. Fans. Mason Biggers lined up wide right. Anthony Stevens wide left from the right hash mark. It'll be a handoff to Castilleja. He's going to follow the block from Gonzalez, and he extends his hand across the 15-yard line. Bounds. The clock stops as the ball goes out of bounds at 417. You want to stay in bounds on the end of that run and let the clock burn, and unfortunately, First man there, number 27, unable to Mario do that, Castilleja. Weathersby for the Wildcats. Castilleja does pick up a few yards. I think it'll be second and six. Yes, yeah, second and six here with 410 left to play. In the fourth quarter, they're letting this clock run down. Play clock at 25 seconds as they break their huddle. Yeah, but with the game clock not running, that play clock is irrelevant as far as burning. It, it is running. <laughs> oh, the game yeah. clock is they, running. So they okay. decide to wind the clock. And, yeah, you're right. I thought they stopped the clock, but it doesn't stop the clock here. And Gilpin will let this one go down. It's at seven seconds. Play clock under five now. Gilpin fakes the handoff to Gonzalez, looks to his left and throws to Gonzalez in the flats, and he falls down after completing the catch. And the that'll be a loss down. of four yards. 
And be a the loss. clock keeps rolling here to 3.30 left to play in the fourth. Back to the line of scrimmage. Bring it up third down. Big play here for the Pirates. You, you can ill afford to turn the ball over here down on your end of the field, but you want to do your darndest to convert here so that you can continue to burn clock. They'll likely burn every second off of this play clock. Good call by Dawson Gonzalez to actually complete that catch because right. he could have just batted it down. He didn't have his feet underneath him when Gilpin went through his progressions and just went through his safety valve. And the clock now down under three minutes to play as he takes a snap with two seconds on the play clock. Gilpin in the pocket, fires deep down the left sideline. It's intercepted down the right sideline, coming away with the pick to the 20, trying to evade a tackle, and he is brought down. The interception for the Wildcats. Wildcats Getting the fans football. into this one is Demario Weathersby. And that's what the Wildcats needed. They are that close to taking the lead back from the Pirates. Number 27, Two minutes, 46 Mario seconds Weathers remaining here pick. in the ball game, and they have it inside the Pirate red zone at the 18-yard line. Well, we talked about last week against Bellhaven. Louisiana College outscored Bellhaven 21 to 13. And they're looking to do something similar here in the fourth quarter against the Pirates. 2.46 left, and the Wildcats take over on the Pirates 18 yard line. All the momentum is with the Wildcats at the moment. Sal Palermo in the shotgun. Trips left, single receiver to the right, and option play, six it out to Briscoe. Briscoe will be slowed up from behind and then goes out of bounds, and Ben Brockman making sure that yeah, that Briscoe, play was left at a limit of about eight yards. Nice gain on first down. Again, momentum still He's with the Wildcats. With Pirates need down, someone to make a big play. Sal Palermo on second and four. Will drop back under pressure. He completes the pass to White, and then White is brought down inside the five by Elijah North. That's a first down. I'll stop the clock to reset the chain. First and goal, Wildcats. Two minutes, and the clock moving now. Two minutes, 15 seconds. First and goal from the five. And they're letting some clock burn here. 2.05 left as Palermo gets instructions from the sideline. 20 seconds on the play clock. 31-26, Southwestern with a lead. But it's down to five and knocking on the door of the end zone are the Wildcats. Briscoe lined up to the right. Palermo will send the right side of his blockers to the left side. And it'll be a keeper for Palermo. He goes in the end zone for a three-yard touchdown. Touchdown, Wildcats! Louisiana College retakes the lead. It's their first lead since the Pirates took a 14-13 lead in the second quarter. A minute 40 left to play in the fourth. There's still plenty of time for the Pirate offense. However, they haven't shown much over the last couple of series with the football. We'll see what they can do. And the Wildcats have to go for two because there's right. no point in not getting a two-point conversion on You don't the board. want to let Will Herbst have an opportunity to beat you. Only tie you. Palermo will have Briscoe lined up to his right. He wants to lay, wave Leon in motion. And now he waves him back to the right side. Palermo rolls out to the right side, looking for Leon, and he throws in the middle. Instead, it's completed, making the catch for the Wildcats. Is the same guy who made a touchdown earlier, Jacob Ganate. And well, that makes it a three-point game. It's out there and for the Pirates to take the if they want it. Western 31, your Louisiana College Wildcats. Well, this 34. is why you have the two-minute drill every week, That's right? right. You practice it all the time, and this is for that reason. A minute 40 left to play in the fourth quarter. The Wildcats storming back to a 34-31 lead. Scoring the last 21 unanswered points. Still a lot of football, folks. Get on your feet, Wildcat fans! Hunter Martinson ready to send this kickoff back to some Pirates, but they're still waiting in their huddle. They're just, you know, the coaching staff telling them, you're still in this. Keep keep your head in the game. Stay focused. Execute. you got a minute and 40 seconds. It all starts with this kick return. 
Elijah Norris and Ethan Powell back deep to receive. Actually, I beg your pardon, for Southwestern, that is, I believe, Zach Velo, number 34. Martinson will kick it away from the 35. This one will go for a touchback. Use that wind at his back to make sure no return will be the difference in the game. Kick into the end zone for the touchback. A minute 40 left to play in this fourth quarter, and you bring that up that you bring up that point. Landry Gilpin will have the wind in his face here to try and march Southwestern down the, the field. Fans. You know, I just said it, and it's true. It's laid out there for the Pirates to take. They just have to execute. Here we go, Wildcat fans! Ethan Powell goes in motion left to right. First and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Landry Gilpin and the Pirates trying to answer back. As they trail 34-31. Gilpin will drop back under pressure. He's going to be lassoed down in the backfield. Down the backfield. That's going to keep the clock burning. The Pirates likely may need to burn one of their timeouts. And that will be a loss back That's to the 18-yard line. 49. He's a freshman, Wildcat fans. Minute 24 left to play in the fourth. Gilpin drops back, hit as he throws, and lobs it just over Anthony Stevens. Stevens bounced around there like a pinball, no flag thrown, but basically incidental contact. That stops the clock at a minute 15 left to play yeah, in the fourth, and it looks like Latin, who has had a great game defensively for the Wildcats, is down with an injury. We'll pause for the injury timeout as well and hope Michael Latin will be all right. 34-31, three-point lead for the Wildcats. A minute 15 left to play in the fourth. It's third and 17 for the Pirates from their, their own 18-yard line when we come back on SHN Sports. Feet. Number one, Micah Latin. Coming to the sideline. Good job, Micah. Micah Latin able to come back under to the sideline under his Hope own power. Minute 15 left to play in it's the fourth. Third it's 34 fans. 31. Southwestern doesn't need to get everything on this play because they know they're going to have to go for it on fourth down if they're stopped short. That's correct. You get about half of it at least. Dawson Gonzalez lined up to the left of Landry Gilpin. Ethan Powell isolated on the right side, trips to the left. Third and 17 from their own 18. Gilpin will drop back. Fires down the middle of the field, and it's intercepted again, and then making sure it falls incomplete is Ethan Powell. What a heads-up play to give the Pirates one more opportunity. That was a good tackle by Powell. He's down. That, that's Showing okay. that he He's played a little up. defense in his high school Woo! career. Demario Withersby almost came up with the interception. Ethan Powell forced it out. That would have been Witherby, Weathersby's second interception of the quarter. It's but instead, a minute eight left to play in the fourth quarter. On your feet, Wildcat. Dillman was 17. trying to get it all on that one play. Unfortunately, he overthrew the receiver. Gilpin in the shotgun. Biggers lines up in the slot on the right side next to Ethan Powell, who's wide right. Joey Robinson is on the slot left. A pass across the middle, and it's incomplete to Biggers, and that will probably oh, be the ball game. Is incomplete. Ball yeah, you'll South likely Western see does have two timeouts left. You'll likely see the Wildcats come out in a, a victory formation. But not enough timeouts to prevent the remaining 104 from burning off the clock. You know the man, Slim. Pirate defense comes back out, and yeah, Southwestern only has go, two timeouts left, and First like and you said, for the Cats. not too great at math, but that probably means that it's going to be Wildcat, or excuse me, victory formation for yeah. James Powell Jr. He'll probably run around for a second and take it, you know, take it to the ground. 
It will be a zone read and a keeper for Powell's. He runs up the middle. He's not going to sacrifice any of his yards the on the ground this afternoon. And I think he picks up maybe a yard on the play. And second Southwestern will take their second half. time out of the half. Pirates should have been ripping at that football right there. So time just focused on a tackle. A minute three left to play in the fourth. You got to give yourself an opportunity with the ball if you can. If they're if they're not going to take a knee, then you need to you need to be stripping at the football to cause a, a turnover. Give yourself another opportunity with the football. Well, while we're at this break, the Pirates You're good sport, Slim. are lined up defensively. The Wildcats are actually using more of this timeout than the Pirates. Fans. Second and eight for James Powell Jr. and the Wildcats from the Pirates 17 yard line. Zone read and a handoff to Briscoe. Briscoe stretches it to the right side, turns the corner. He is just short of the first down, I believe. Yeah, but he gets out of run. bounds and stops the clock at 57 seconds in the fourth. Pirates will take the out of bounds play because it does stop the clock and doesn't require them to burn a timeout if they even have one. I believe Pirates have one final timeout left. And like you say, here it is, third and two, going out of bounds right there. Leaves the door open a little bit for Southwestern. Well, the Wildcats will likely kick a field goal if they don't convert here on third down, but it's still within a touchdown. Yeah, they do have to they do have to actually run the third down play here as it'll be Powell keeping it and running it to the right side. I think he does get the first down as he crosses the ten. It and appears so. That will move and the chains. Powell with the run. And this should be the end of the game, Unless I suppose. We got a penalty of some kind and I don't see one. It is a first down with 49 seconds. And he picked up the first down on the run. Timeout. Southwestern. Third and final charge timeout of regulation. Pirates take their final timeout. 49 seconds left to play in the fourth. First and goal from the eight for the Wildcats. They came storming back here in the fourth quarter to take this 34-31 lead. Tough pill to swallow. Please it's a long drive home. To 53 seconds. If, if Five, three the, the, uh, the Pirates just need to get past this because they did you know, everything they could to pull this game out. The Wildcats just snatched it away in the fourth quarter. 53 seconds left now on the game clock as they added a few seconds after that first down was picked up, I suppose. Victory formation for Sal Pal Palermo and the Wildcats. And he also doesn't want to sacrifice Palermo any yards. And he gets up to the line of scrimmage to take as the, clock runs down. the loss of about half a yard, really. And... The Pirates out of timeouts. The play clock, about 11 seconds difference from the game clock. So one more snap will have to be gotten off here by the Wildcats. They'll go ahead and take that now. Palermo gets it to the line of scrimmage and takes his knee, and that will be the final play of the ball game. As the clock runs The out. Wildcats come storming back from down 31-13 in the fourth Western. quarter Pirates to take 31. a 34-31 victory. They improved to 2-1 and one on the season. The Southwestern Pirates fall to 0-3 on the season. And we will take a break here on SHN Sports. We're going to see if we can get Joe well, Austin for a post-game interview. We'll be back in a moment here on game, SHN Louisiana. Sports.